What's up? Hello! Welcome to the Stream of Blood. Thank you, Clinton Trucks, for that heavy metal intro that you put together here for us on the Taste of Blood, one of the shows we have here on the Stream of Blood where we play tabletop role-playing games. We play Dungeons and Dragons. We play Vampire the Masquerade. We play all kinds of tabletop role-playing games. Tonight, we have something very, very special planned for you. We are going to play my favorite game of the 90s, with my favorite people of today, but also the 90s, we are going to play the Werewolf the Apocalypse High School Reunion with my brother and my gaming group from high school. I couldn't be more excited about that. Uh, I got to tell you, we, we spent the whole week making characters for our favorite game, Werewolf, Werewolf the Apocalypse, that we played back in 1997. When I was 17 years old, and these guys were uh, the same age. I think uh, one of us was a little older, but we were all uh, together in our friend Brad's basement playing this game, Werewolf the Apocalypse. If you've never heard of it or seen it played, I, I welcome you to the world of Werewolf the Apocalypse. We will tell you all about the world as we play. Uh, and um, I'm just excited to get the old band back together. We've got my entire old gaming group, so let's introduce them uh, one at a time. Uh, you're going to love him. You're going to see him on here more if I can twist his arm to be on here some more. Uh, no one knows more about sci-fi or fantasy than uh, this person who is related to me by blood. Our father really ruined our brains with that stuff. Uh, Dr. Frederick Wortham would not approve of the upbringing our dad gave us, twisting our little minds with horror, sci-fi, and fantasy. Um, I just love uh, anytime we get to do something like this together. Please welcome my brother, Adam Logan, everybody. What's up, dude? Hey, man. And Adam, you know, uh, I hope you're not having like any kind of stage fright or anything because you, you're you not generally someone who likes to perform or like do things in front of people. Is that, would you not say a, that's not, true? <laughs> yeah, I don't like to do that at all. Not at all. <laughs> okay. Well, it's going to be fine because in a minute, yeah. Adam Logan goes away, and Anton the Silver Fang Philodox comes out, and you just let him take over. <laughs> That's when you would like come back with like a funny rejoinder, but don't worry about it. <laughs> um, are you ready to play some werewolf? What, what, what have, have you thought of werewolf fondly over the years? I mean, yeah. what would you, is there anything you'd like to say about the game before we bring in our friends? Uh, first uh, RPG ever played uh, with you and. These guys, obviously, like literally the first time I ever played an RPG, and I played a Bonar. I remember yeah. that. Yes, so. um, and uh, it's funny because a lot of people used to talk about how they started on Dungeons and Dragons, and I kind of did because our, our friend Matt Toth. I kind of started RPGs by playing Dungeons and Dragons with him, I, but really, the first time I played more than one session of an RPG and like developed a character was, I think, also on Werewolf the Apocalypse. Yeah, you're. I, I don't know, man, because like I can remember being in your bedroom when we were very young. Like you were like maybe in middle school, and we were playing like uh, two man games of X Men RPG. And uh, oh, that's system. right. <laughs> two yeah, man. You, you were the game master. I was the only player. It was in your in our bedroom. That was the first. Yeah, one. I don't know if that if we can call that official uh, because <laughs> I didn't have the Marvel superheroes role playing game. I only had the X Men add on to it. And I was trying to play with just the add-on. I think it kind of worked. Um, let's add on some great folks. This guy has been my friend uh, since Adam and I moved to Knoxville, Tennessee in 1996. He is a writer. Um, he is involved with the Stoker Awards. He, he writes in the horror genre. Um, he's a father of two, like me. Uh, and um, he was our storyteller more than I was, at least as often as I was. Please welcome Brad Hodson, everybody. What's hey, up, dude? Logan Brothers. Good Hello. to be on playing with you again. <laughs> yeah. I just remember yeah. when, when we weren't playing Werewolf the Apocalypse, just the three of us going to the local ska shows. <laughs> That's, that is what we did, right? Yeah. That was pretty much our lives. Uh, <laughs> For, for like four years, it was just like werewolf and ska. <laughs> yeah, that sounds so nineties. It's painful. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Like, like yeah. the only way we could make that better is if we were really into Party of Five. <laughs> uh, let me tell you something, though. If someone, if you, if I, if I had never met someone, and um, 
you were like, hey, do you know my friend Dave? And I was like, no, what's he into? And you were like, eh, werewolf and ska. I'd be like, that sounds like a cool guy to me. You know? <laughs> okay, maybe you guys disagree. Uh, yeah, this you're is fun be being on here, too, because uh, like, like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, um, I'm so happy to be uh, gaming with you, you again. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm I'm still here. Um, look, if 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 you get lost, we'll just say that you've slipped sideways into the umbra. Okay. <laughs> That's a deep werewolf term, and uh, you know, just go out and come back in. Um, uh, the, we 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 maintain the highest technical standards here on the stream of blood until we don't, everybody. Um, okay, and let's bring in our next player, this guy. Uh, you know, I have to ask him about this when I bring him in. He was our good pal. He played in. Giovanni Chronicles Vampire with us. He played. Was he in our like one Wraith game we played? He was in all of our World of yeah. Darkness games that we played. And I have to ask him about Pongo, his werewolf character Pongo. Uh, please welcome <laughs> uh, my good pal, your good pal, Mike Underdown, everybody. <laughs> all right. Hey, guys. Heck yeah, dude. You, you came in really <laughs> was black that a good, metal, and I appreciate that- it. Was that a good entrance? I, c- I could also like like do a passing kind of. Well, we probably <laughs> don't want to was... do that a lot because I will stab myself on accident. I guarantee you. Oh, hey, do that. That would be a great entrance. Like, <laughs> it's a, stabbing yourself. It's a literal stream of blood, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be excellent. Uh, now, wait, I, 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 so we were talking about this. We were kind of joking about mm-hmm. it on our text thread. But I don't remember. Was Pongo a real character that you made? Okay, okay. You made, right, you made right, like a you made a werewolf that was like a let's, Dalmatian. Is that let's right? let's rewind the clock and take off a lot of this fur that I have, and I was much younger and much prettier, and I was very excited because I was like, "Oh, werewolves! Oh, wait, what if there was like a were Dalmatian?" Stay with me, because I had You're the a only person that ever asked that. Go ahead. Yeah, and I was, and I remember working so hard, and you guys, the look on Jared and Brad's face, who kind of brought me into this, and even Adam was just like, "Mikey, no." It was just, I was like, "Well, if it's a bonar, and sometimes they mate with like domesticated dogs, then maybe you could have like a wear Dalmatian." And for some reason, I still don't know to this day. He drove a, a, a tugboat and was like friends with Rokia, which were like wear sharks. Look, I'm, listen, yeah. I'm just telling you, I still think that complicated character stands the test of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's deep, a complicated deep backstory. <laughs> Look, or, if they're going to put – yeah. gonna put, wait, go ahead, Brad. I'm sorry. I was just saying, poor, poor Mike. I feel like Adam and I really uh, uh, warped his childhood because Mike, Mike would always be like, the werewolves can win, right? There's hope. And Adam and I were like, no, everybody's nope. going to die. <laughs> yes, yeah. totally. I remember how I, crushed um, you were, Mike, when we were like, no, man, the worm's going to win. The worm's yeah. going to win. <laughs> the, only, the only RPG Mike story that I remember specifically is Giovanni Chronicles and me, Brad, and Devon convincing Mike he was a Wookalar. I forgot uh, about so, that. Yeah. Like any group of like any group of high school friends getting together oh. and joking, this has already dived so deep into private <laughs> jokes Look that the, the viewers may have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, we convinced we convinced Mike that there was a vampire clan called Wookalar and that he had become <laughs> one of them. No, no, no. You're furiously flipping through the rule book. Like I don't see it. I don't see it. What are their disciplines? We don't have that expansion Wait, yet. What is it? And you just and they kept looking at each other, and I was like, "Really? Was my wear Dalmatian that bad?" And as you can yeah, see, uh, that affected my entire life. I'm actually a homeless man that's broken into someone's house. Uh, so you he had a Dalmatian. He can still get high. He can play a werewolf <laughs> like a motherfucking riot. Thank you. Um, I gotta bring in our our fourth player because he's he's coming to us all the way from a different continent. And uh, we've made him wait too long already. Uh, our good pal, uh, coming to us all the way from Chile, I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly. Oh, by the way, I'm, we're playing Werewolf tonight. I'm going to pronounce everything wrong. Um, he was in all of our chronicles as well. Uh, and uh, I'm just so happy to have him game with us tonight. Please welcome Rusty Birdwell, everybody. <laughs> Woo! I exist. What's up, buddy? What's up, guys? Yes. I was, I was just oh. back here, like, all the inside jokes were going from the old days. And I was like, oh, and then... <laughs> and, and, is it, I, I, and the only thing I really need to add, uh, well, two things. One is that uh, we, we a lot of like me, Mikey and Brad worked in an arcade, like an old school oh, video yeah. game arcade. Mm-hmm. So our life was also 
not just ska and hardcore shows, uh, which, by the way, Shahulid, the old school band yes. that we saw, was the perfect werewolf yeah, yeah, music. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and timeless werewolf music. That's the only things I had to add from the um, from the previous discussion of Knoxville in the Those 90s. were good additions. I forgot yeah. about the arcade. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. Lots of Tekken 3. Um, <laughs> yes, and yeah, you guys kicked ass at Tekken 3. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I... I'll just say that Mike has, you know, any cred he lost for making a wear Dalmatian, he's gotten back by pulling out his actual high school yeah. werewolf, the apocalypse yeah. poster. That's right. That's right. Look at that. You can see I've kept it in beautiful mint condition. It's hung up on two tripods because, again, I'm a homeless man that broke into someone's house to listen to yes. ska and pretend to be a werewolf. There will be uh, full nudity by the end of the stream, kids. So he's not we've all changed a little hey, bit, Mike. and Mike now breaks so, into people's houses. <laughs> Mike, ahead, Mike's ahead, actually Brad. a dog trainer now, and I, yeah. Mike, I've, I've never asked you this, but like, did did werewolf have anything to do with you becoming a dog trainer? Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. And I keep taking the dogs out to the moon, and they're not changing. And I'm just like, Pongo, when are you going to come and take me away from all of this? <laughs> Please. I have a follow-up question to everybody because, you know, it's been sort of 20 years since we've played this game last. Jeez. And as the poster on Mike's wall says, when will you rage? Have any of us raged yet? Brad, um, have you, did, when, when, did you rage yet? I, I, I mean, I'll speak up. I, um, I was, in, I was, I was in a target. Yeah. And, uh, I think I came pretty close, but then I think it was an ulcer. So I don't know. Yeah. That counts, right? Yeah. No, Rusty, <laughs> when will you rage or have you raged? I don't know, man. I got a toddler. So there's a lot of rage, <laughs> yeah. a lot of rage in the house every day. Just me, yeah. <laughs> like me watching him rage and <laughs> me suppressing my own rage to set a good example. Uh, I think that like, you know, toddlers don't need Kronos for them to wreak havoc, you know? <laughs> Um, and then, uh, Adam, I don't want to speak for you, but as my brother, I know that Adam rages every day. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I, I, he raged the second he saw the poster think, and then the next day. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, well, guys, uh, are we ready to do this? Are we ready to enter the world of Werewolf the Apocalypse? Hell yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Well, if you're not familiar with Werewolf, colon, the apocalypse, you may be um, surprised or taken aback by uh, this take on werewolves. So let me just sort of tell the story of this game and, and, and what the world is like very briefly, and then we'll begin our, our tale, this new legend creating about the Garu, the children of the moon. Uh, you see, uh, millennia ago, when the earth was young, when uh, the worlds of spirit and the uh, and the, the solid material world were one were one tapestry. Gaia, the spirit of the earth, needed children to protect her. She needed fangs and claws uh, to act as her soldiers, to act as her executioners. And so, uh, because the entire world was all sort of timey, wimey, ooky, gooky kind of, you know, spirit and matter flowing into each other. She just took two of her creations, man and wolf, and she just sort of mashed them together into a race that would become known as the Garu. The Garu are werewolves, if you use the, the word that people use for them now, but they're much more than that. They are children of, the, of, of Gaia. They are children of the spirit world. And it's their job to protect the earth from those that would desecrate it, from those that would pollute it, from those that would destroy it. And so um, the Garu are a, a race of beings um, uh, who mate. They don't bite each other to create more werewolves. They, they mate with... Uh, uh, you know, regular wolves or humans, uh, and then Garu children are produced, and those children can transform into huge wolf-like beings, half man, half wolf, uh, nine feet tall, slavering jaws, claws the size of just long. What's a long length for a claw? <laughs> banana. <Sharp>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a lethal whole, banana, banana length. And <laughs> claws the length, claws the Ooh. length of a banana. Um, 
I think it's and, a uh, and, oh. it? like banana claws. <laughs> banana. banana claws is one of the powers the guru have. So that is who the guru are, and that and the world they inhabit is one uh, where they are losing the war. Uh, the game is called Werewolf: The Apocalypse. Because just like real Clinton, life, Jared. <laughs> well, unfortunately, just like real life, yes, Mike. Oh, no. Because uh, the Guru are losing their war to uh, to to fight for the planet, uh, to fight for Gaia. Uh, humans have despoiled the Earth, and um, the power of the worm holds sway over human society, uh, over human industry. The worm is a sort of a metaphysical concept. It's sort of uh, the Satan of the Garu. Uh, the worm is everything that desecrates, everything that corrupts, um, everything that gnaws away at part of Gaia. Uh, pollution, uh, oppression, uh, corruption. That is what the worm is. And it manifests itself in, in many different ways. So uh, I want to slowly introduce the characters and their world we, we thought about what, what, what kind of a setting could we do where we could really see, you know, the natural side of the guru, the nature that they inhabit and protect, but also the, the worm, the, 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 the corrupted side of the earth, the, the ways that industry is encroaching on those wild places, the ways that humans despoil it. And we thought, uh, why not set our story in Alaska? And so I take you now to Anchorage, Alaska where uh, a man is uh, getting off a bus. Um, it's winter in Alaska. And uh, the bus it, it has all of these sort of like special snow tires for a bus. Like they'll have these big, <laughs> thick treads on it. And uh, getting off of the bus is like literally stepping into, you know, what you or I in Southern California would call a blizzard. But Alaskans <laughs> call it, you know, just weather. They, they call You know what they call it? They call it October. Yeah. That's what they call this. This and the man is that's getting off. Yeah, the man that's getting off, he's looking for something. He's searching for something. And Rusty, would you please describe Dalton Riggs as he gets off this bus into kind of sideways snow? Yeah, so so uh, as the snow gets off, he uh he gets out and he he kind of looks to the side and he squints and he goes another goddamn town. And he's uh <laughs> He's he's like you know around five eleven. He's really wiry, uh, you know, kind of uh, some stubble on his face. Uh, he's got sort of a sort of a like nineties haircut. It's just it's not a mullet, but it's, it's getting there. It wants to be there. Um, you know, normally he wears uh, some some cowboy boots um, or some old sneakers, jeans, and a button up kind of plaid western ish looking shirt. Uh, I think he's got on some big parka that looks like it's maybe from um, like a, you know, Army Navy kind of store right now that he seems to have just picked up. And he's got a like a rucksack sort of slung over his shoulder. Um, he's looking for something or someone, isn't he? He's looking for he, who is he looking yeah. for? He's searching. His, it was uh, it was his best girl. Uh, and her <laughs> <laughs> her name was uh, uh, Andrea. And, okay, uh, great. Didn't yeah. know that. Writing down Andrea. Yeah, yeah. I, I wrote it down a couple minutes ago, so you know you're right behind the, the flash news. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, he's he's looking for her, and uh, he's he's been looking for her for for I don't know three or four years, kind of moving from uh, town to town, and um, he he uh, often speaks to the dead. Um, sometimes reluctantly, sometimes because he, he needs to get information and he's, uh, he, he's pretty sure Andrea is dead, but he's sort of holding on to hope that she isn't. Um, but, but, uh, some, some sort of force took her, uh, away from him. Um, and that's what he's hunting. Great. And so, um, what is this process? I think he's here. And I think that every time he shows up in a new town, he, uh, he, he knocks on the door of the local ghosts to see if they've seen Andrea or seen her spirit because he's afraid that she has passed on into the afterlife. Uh, and as a silent strider, uh, yeah. that is a tribe of the Guru who have an intimate connection with the dead. They, they, hail, uh, they, they, are, uh, they hail from, from Africa and from parts uh, east of that. 
Uh, and uh, the old kind of like the idea of like the Egyptian jackal is very much in their appearance when they transform into their wolf forms. Uh, and so uh, this silent strider, Dalton Riggs, uh, another town uh, and another seance. Where does he yeah. go and, and who does he talk to when he knocks on the doors of the dead? Uh, I think, you know, he'd try to find um, an area where uh, he wouldn't be seen because, you know, I, I assume what everybody else is going to see unless he steps sideways is just going to be him talking to a, a wall or something, which is where he usually draw um, draw a room with his, his fetish. Um, and uh, so I assume he just um, picks an area that he, he feels like the dead are going to be more present. That could be, you, you might want to tell me, I was thinking um, a church or a bar, you know, uh, some, somewhere for lonely hey. spirits that, that need to be. He prefers bars, um, and he might, you know, get his first bar. drink in town. Yeah. Can it be a church a with a bar in it? Can it be a church? I mean, in Alaska, that could happen, you know, it's so limited. <laughs> you got to bring in resources. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that's that's actually such an amazing idea, and it sounds so uniquely at <laughs> Alaska that I'm now making it actually true. So All right. uh, <laughs> in Anchorage, I know it might sound silly, but I think if you've ever traveled in like very rural places, you know that they tend to combine like a truck stop, service station, restaurant, true. you know, place to get a shower. Um, and so I think that the place you've gotten off the bus not only uh, has a bar in it, but it also has a chapel. Uh, yeah. And it has, you know, a place to take showers. This is a truck stop. Out, you know, on the outskirts of Anchorage, and so um, you are looking for the ghosts that have passed away in this weird kind of combo. It's called Jeanette's Buy and Go. Jeanette's All Buy right. and Go. Uh, they want you to buy and then go. But if you want, you can get a little. Uh, you can get a little religion. Yeah, because uh, Jeanette Jeanette is a Reformed minister of the Pentecostal Church. Uh, and uh, she beautiful. will stop flipping burgers long enough to go over to the chapel and uh, marry you or, uh, you know, uh, give a sermon. Yeah. And so you're in Texas this place. Your bear. You, you, as you, you say you have to carve. Your fetish is a needle. Is that right? Like a sewing needle? No, no. That was a previous one. We went with knuckle bones in the end. Oh, knuckle <laughs> bones in a bag. Right. That's right. Um, no. Okay. Everybody so um, what I would love for you to do is roll your gnosis. Um, yeah. And just so everybody out there in viewer land knows, we have created a hack for our Werewolf the Apocalypse game. And our hack isn't that brilliant. All we're doing is stealing all the ways that the V5, the Vampire 5th Edition rules work. We're stealing that for our Werewolf game. And then when you get into Rage, that sort of becomes Hunger Dice. And we'll get in that, into that in a little bit. But uh, in order for you uh, to succeed, sometimes I'll say you need two successes. Sometimes I'll say you need three or four um, or sometimes I'll say, roll, see how many successes you get, and I'll tell you how well you did or, or whatever. Um, so that's that's this case. Uh, roll and everything that came up six or above, please please tell me. How, how did it go? Uh, well, Jared, let me ask you this because I know we're playing rage like hunger, right? Uh, yeah. How much rage do you have? I mean, I'm an Arun, so I have five. You're an Arun, right? so but I'm starting you – well – Rage is now only a temporary stat. Right. It doesn't right. have permanent dots. So your rage as an Arun at the beginning of a storyline starts at five. Wait, so I'm going to put my hunger at five on this roll? That's it. Uh, you Basically, know, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to like the smell of the place and freak out and tear it down. Actually, you know what? <laughs> five seems a little high. Why don't we do this? Yeah, man. Let's, Why don't we let's do start, this? Let's, let's start off like with a, the massive gorilla. The Jeanette's get and go. Yeah. That's awesome. The gorilla on no, PCP no. just wants a beer. You're right. Before the <laughs> other characters even arrive, Rusty's going to massacre <laughs> everybody at the, the buy and go. Here's what yeah. I'm going to do instead. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say your rage starts at three. So awesome. It starts at three. Okay, because uh, you're because right, you're in our room. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, two successes. Two successes. Okay. So um, you're in the bar portion of Jeanette's Buy and Go, yeah, uh, which is also kind of a liquor store. I, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, I think his first move is to go up to the bar and order a shot and a beer. Uh, down Great. just down those wow. very immediately. He doesn't really like what he's about to have to do. Um, right, things get a little things get you know the way uh, when you when you suck down a beer and you take a shot really quick. The way that when the alcohol hits his system, 
that's when he suddenly notices someone on one of the stools who wasn't there before. Uh, and mm. that man turns his head to face you, and he's a little bit not in full color. Mm. He's kind of painted in grays and kind of dark mottled browns. And, and the, the scent of liquor coming off of him is more than any alcoholic has ever had oozing out of their pores. Like he is like alcohol embodied. Uh, and he looks over at you and he's like, ah, you see me? Don's going to be like, oh, fuck. Let's just start in the chapel. <laughs> He's going to signal for another beer, and then he's going to turn to the guy and be like, "I, yeah, man, I see you. You came with the storm? Yep. You could say that. I mean, in the bus, but there was a storm with us. He hiccups and, like, slime dribbles out of his mouth. Uh, nice. and, and uh, the pungent smell of just, I mean, it's like, it, it's so thick with alcohol. It might as well be like floor cleaner, like hits your face. And he's like, not the snow, the death. <laughs> hmm. There's a big storm of death, huh? <laughs> Many died out at flat top tonight. And he looks toward the window and past where uh, the, the, the big kind of window and, and the window has like things written on it like uh, corn dog 199, you know, and, uh, and uh, 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 you know, tamales, you know, uh, 39 cents. That's too cheap. Uh, beyond that, out in, through the snow, you think for a second, Dalton, that maybe you see kind of another storm because you're gazing into the death lands. You think that maybe you see another storm out there. And he's like, oh, not safe to be out tonight. Big storm on flat top. He yeah. starts to kind of wobble toward you like, like a drunk that needs to go home. And you can see that he's about to like fall toward you. Hey, listen. Can you get a little liquor to the other side? <laughs> Anything. A beer. Can you push it over here? <sighs> and he's like, kind of now he's kind of like swatting at you and his hands going right through your body because he's not really where you're at. Yeah, so I'm kind of doing this, but I also, uh, since he's given me information, is it possible to slip a beer sideways? Which is a, a phrase I never thought I'd say. <laughs> Do you know the right of binding? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> then you may not. Uh, the right okay. of binding. Guru, uh, the Guru know many different things. They have fetishes and they have rights and they have gifts taught to them by spirits. And the right of binding would allow you to take a human uh, object like a cell phone and take it over to the other side with you. But you don't know that. All you know now is that there is some sort of storm at death All right. on Flat Top Mountain outside of Anchorage. Okay, I'm going to uh, pay for my beers and kind of look at the place where he was sitting and just be like, poor soul. And then I'm going to sling my bag over and start heading that way. And so Dalton Riggs takes my very railroady story hook and heads <laughs> out into the snow. <laughs> um, <laughs> meanwhile, um, three... Guru are returning from a very important rite. They're returning from their rite of passage. A new pack has recently been forged among the Guru that dwell out here in southeastern Alaska. Um, you are headed back to um, uh, the Chugak uh, State Park where uh, there is a sept, uh, a sept run by the Silver Fangs. It's called the Warhorns Sept. Warhorn Sept in Chugak State Park. You have been out on your rite of passage, which is literally a quest that young Guru um, go on in order to be accepted, initiated into the ranks of uh, the wolf people, the ranks of the Guru, uh, and, and, and to form a pact and to, to bind to themselves a tribal totem. 
And so through this thick storm, three, uh, three forms move, and you're deep in the wilderness as well because you're not coming toward Flat Top Mountain uh, from uh, Jeanette's Buy and Go. No, you're out in the woods heading back from deep in Chugak State Park where you, um, you encountered some spirits and you bound, bound one to you and you became adults in the eyes of your kin. And so I will introduce you one at a time and then I will ask, what is something badass and fucking metal that you did during your rite of passage? <laughs> and I will start with Anton, the Silver Fang. Uh, Anton, tell us a little bit how, about how your character looks Maybe a little bit of what what he his backstory is, very little, and then tell us uh, what's the badass metal thing he did during his rite of passage. Um, uh, Anton, I would describe him as very unassuming, uh, maybe a little bit stockier than normal, just very clean, clean cut. Very the only thing you would notice about him, or the way you would just probably describe him, is that he's unimpressed by anything. Mm -hmm. Um. A little bit of backstory on him. He he has Russian descent. His family is from Russia, but he was born and raised in Alaska. So even though his name is Anton, he does not speak with an accent or no Russian, really, other than just a little bit of passing. Um, the badass thing he did during this rite of passage would be... <clears throat> I don't know, like, what would be a normal thing you'd do in a rite of passage? Can I bring well, a rite of passage... Uh, sorry, Jared, I wanted to bring up, uh, maybe you can do this as a shout out reference uh, for one of my favorite characters Adam has ever played, <laughs> which was the corpse thrower. <laughs> Grease face corpse thrower. That's the it. first yeah. ever, yeah. Grease so face maybe corp you threw yeah. some corpses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, maybe that's, uh, that's something you did. I believe, that, I believe that that character that you played all the way back in 1996 or 97, Adam, used a corpse as a weapon at one point. And that's the kind of badass metal thing I'm looking for. <laughs> um, that's okay, the kind so, of thing you might so do we during bound, a rite of passage. In so other words, bound, there are no wrong answers. Okay, so we found the, the mammoth, right? Oh, yes. Your tribal totem is the mammoth. Yes. So I was the first one to see it and encounter it and uh, saw it face-to-face -face without flinching. Yeah. And it's ah, immensity okay. and it's rotting immensity. Rotting <laughs> so, immensity. Um, uh, Goddamn werewolf poetry right there. I like that. <laughs> It's Rotting Immensity is the name of my new uh, black metal album. So um, <laughs> here, here's the deal. Uh, I said I said travel totem. I meant pack totem. You have the pack has to go out during the rite of passage and bind a totem to it. And I think that yes, at one point you guys were deep in the woods and you could just see pieces of something, but it was moving the trees and the the, the crash in the underbrush uh, seemed to indicate something huge and whatever it was it wasn't just that it was kind of just beyond your vision it was that it was so large that it probably couldn't all be taken in at once even if you could get a clear look at it and the person who found out was <clears throat> Anton who walked straight into the forest and as the thing the spirit called mammoth turned to Anton and showed its 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 rotting immensity to him <laughs> Anton didn't even flinch. And so uh, still, he, he remains impassive, cool, calm, collected as you move through this storm. And now I turn to uh, Jack. Jack, tell us a little bit about what your character looks like, backstory, and what badass thing Jack mm. did on the Rite of Passage. So, believe Jack's, yes, uh, go ahead. Jack's go an ahead. average size guy, fit. <laughs> Jack's an average size guy, um, athletic uh, build. He uh, he's of native descent, but he doesn't know anything about his background because his grandparents were taken as small children and put in one of the re-education schools uh, that uh, are is an awful tradition that happened to many native people here. Um, so he had no connection to his past until his first change and then the one connection he discovered is that his father is the north wind um again spirit matter crazy things happen in the world of werewolf um <laughs> so uh on the rite of passage uh as a galliard his auspice uh he's he's the storyteller uh the his historian 
stories are very important to the guru. Uh, they, they make up the culture. So he, uh, he had to retrieve the story of an elder who had gone out to die and was never seen again. And no one knows what happened. And so he had to get his story. But when he found the elder spirit, the tainted bear, this Kodiak grizzly who had an evil spirit inside of him that killed the elder was uh, guarding his spirit to keep Guru from speaking to him. So uh, so Jack got in a fight with the bear and the bear was going to kill him. And he took his uh, uh, fetish hand ax, uh, which uh, fetishes have spirits bound into them. And uh, he was trying to block the the wolf's or the bear's jaws and he had it between its jaws and then he summoned the power of the axe to to create a, a white out blizzard snowstorm but because it was in the the jaws of the bear it did it to the bear's face and uh and he froze the bear's insides and defeated this uh, tainted bear so he could, yes. he could come back with the story um that's really badass um but it had a little side effect you weren't expecting jack wild this fetish is truly powerful because um, the storm you guys are walking through was created by your fetish when you destroyed that bear. <laughs> nice. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's just spreading okay. all over Anchorage now. Uh, bear bear uh, batter is floating in you it. Got it. You got yeah. it good. This rotting immensity all over the place. What are you going to do? Yeah. Um, and so um, and, uh, these are. And you know what? Oh, I got the elder story too, and it, it's not that interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was just saying I got the elder well, story also, and it wasn't that interesting. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. And finally, uh, Crowcatcher. <laughs> no, yeah. no, that's quite all right. Um, Crowcatcher of the Red Talons, your story uh, and you, what, a little bit of what you look like right now and uh, <laughs> and uh, what you did on the right of path. And I, uh, I just disappeared. Can you guys still hear me? Oh, I'm back. Nice. Yeah. You're here. That was that was the power of the entrance of Crowcatcher. Um, all right, let me start by saying that I'm I'm only three years old because I was born as a wolf. That was more of a cat move, but anyway. So yeah, Crowcatcher is of the clan Red Talons, which basically thinks that probably a majority of mankind needs to be called uh, absolutely wiped out because they're beyond redemption. And uh, so I was born as a wolf. Saw so my Mother and father, uh, gunned down by one of the plane flight things that they do, was claimed by the Red Talons, and now, uh, actually, so, if you saw a crow catcher who goes by the human name Jesse and doesn't like it, um, he is about 6'1", but he stoops, very wild eyes, right, he's, he's, he, he looks... Maybe not quite this hirsute and hairy, but definitely grown out a little rough and rugged. Um, and has a really kind of unnatural grin that he likes to throw at people, right? Uh, so again, as I said, the Red Talons militant, want to kill and eat everybody. And the badass thing that uh, we did, I did, in the uh, pursuit was at one point this rotting immensity <laughs> uh, had knocked back Anton and knocked over Brad and I. I switched to my wolf form and went out ahead of him and went, I can't <laughs> fake that I was hurt. So as he saw that, since prey came running right at me, I rolled over, shifted, and, went, <sighs> and took out one of his eyes. So um, That's fucking cool as shit, bro. And also, oh, yeah. it really plays into <laughs> your auspice role. Because not only do they have different tribes that have you know, different outlooks. For example, the Red Talons want to cull humanity. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Crowcatcher is a ragabash. That means he's a yep. trickster. Um, so, uh, yes, all of that <laughs> happened. You all did all of that. And uh, and now you're heading back victorious with your new totem spirit in tow. And occasionally you look behind you and you see the enormous, like, mammoth, like, just sort of outlined in the snow. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yes, it's yes. rotting immensity. There's the album yeah. cover. Yeah. Oh, girl, yeah. I want to show you my rotting immensity. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, um, you're heading back through the uh, the whiteout snowstorm that Jack Wild uh created with his fetish, and you uh, return to uh the sept uh the Warhorn sept. Um, Warhorn sept septs are sort of like. Um, places where werewolves congregate, wild places they want to keep free and safe from the encroachment of man. Um, and in some cases, like in this case, they do their best to create a state park around it or 
uh, you know, make sure that it is policed against uh, pollution and uh, litter and uh, just like kind of human depredation. Uh, and this particular sept uh, encompasses all of the Chugak State Park. Um, the Silver Fangs run this sept. That is our friend Anton's tribe. The Silver Fangs uh, consider themselves the lords, kings, and princes of the Guru. Uh, for those vampire fans out there, they are the Ventru of the werewolf tribes. Um, they believe themselves to be the first among the Guru and uh, the leaders. And so the Silver <laughs> Fangs maintain this sept, and they are the ones that put together this intertribal pack of young new Guru. They are the ones that matched uh, Anton with Jack Wild and with our friend uh, Crowcatcher, because uh, the major tribes in this area of Alaska are the Silver Fangs, the Wendigo, and uh, the Red Talons. And so they are, they they put together this intertribal pack. And storm or not, when you re when you finally return to um, the cairn of their uh, of their sept, Hidden Lake. Uh, their representatives will be there waiting for you with, with drink and with food and with a warm fire to hear your tales, or at least that's what was supposed to happen. But I'm afraid to tell you that uh, each of you should all roll alertness. You can add that to your wits when you roll it. Wits plus alertness. And by the way, all of you will start at um, you guys since you've done so well. And you've been, definitely been in your war form or at one rage each right now. One rage. I got one success. Okay. Anybody else? Two. Uh, just a moment. One success. One success. So it's Anton who is the first person to uh, see something. So Hidden Lake is called such because um, it is truly a, a hidden lake. Um, and it does appear on maps, but few people go there because it's off a lot of the trails. If you go to the flat top mountain sort of um, uh, park area, the trails there, you have to walk an hour into just straight forest to get to Hidden Lake where the cairn of the sept of the Warhorn sept is. And um, it's like kind of down in a culvert, you know, it's kind of down in a very steep little valley um, uh, with a very forested on the sides of the valley. And it's not a large like miles, it's about a mile long with like a lake right at the bottom of it. Um, it's October, but the lake is already getting well on its way to starting to freeze over. Uh, but that's not th – all of that greets your eyes. Um, you can almost see it through the through the splashing snow. But uh, what Anton actually sees uh, right down by this, uh, the, the bank uh, uh, is, a, uh, is a, a, a lump in the snow that wasn't there when you left. Hmm. <clears throat> Something has been covered by the snow. And as he sees this, uh, Jack's talking to Crowcatcher. They're coming out of the blizzard, and their silhouettes looking all badass. And Jack's just like, "No, no, 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 no! I know the water inside; it looks clean. But I'm telling you, that's where we defecate. We want to drink out of it." <laughs> I just want to nudge and elbow these guys out of their conversation. Try to point it out to them. <laughs> yeah, Crowcatcher's gonna <laughs> shake his hand and just be like, "I know how toilets work, bro." Um, so <laughs> yeah, uh, can I, is it actually sa safe to shift to lupus, uh, in this place? <laughs> it is. Um, there's nobody watching. Um, yeah. and, uh, if you were going to do that anywhere, it would be here in a, at the cairn of a sept, uh, the place of power, the, <laughs> the place where Gaia is in, and the spirit world are closest to, uh, the regular world. And so would you please roll stamina plus primal urge for me? There is a skill in werewolf like firearms or stealth called primal urge. Uh, and uh, it's uh, how you do all your wolf stuff, you know, tracking prey by scent, hearing things that you wouldn't normally uh, be able to hear with a human ear and transforming. And that was what plus primal urge, Jared? Stamina. Stamina, stamina gotcha. 
All right, gentlemen, just a moment. I'm going to be rolling six dice. Here we go. Why am I British? I don't know. Okay, two successes. Everybody becomes <laughs> British when they role play. I don't Obviously. know why. It Obviously. doesn't matter what game they're playing. They're like, you're like, you guys are New Yorkers in 1930s, and the mob wants to recruit you, and the people are like, here I am. I am a New Yorker in the 30s. Um, well, okay, so um, I'm, you, I'm happy um, to not be the odd man out. So I got two successes, but a possible bestial failure, if you want to play with that. Is it a possible or it is a bestial failure? A bestial possible. failure is when you have failed. Possible. And one of your... It can't be. It, it's either is or it isn't, my friend. So it isn't. So it it isn't. I'm just going by the it dice isn't. roller. Okay. So so yeah, the dice roller works really well, but um um a, a bestial failure would apply to this werewolf hack we're doing. Everybody, if you sure. got a one on a on a uh, rage die, and then and then you fail the roll, you would get a bestial failure. But you have succeeded with two successes, which I think means that you know um the two successes doesn't mean it's an instant transformation. Um, you kind of like have to crack your bones and like the, you know, uh, the, 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 your mouth opens and the snout of the wolf kind of tears out of it. Uh, and, um, you do know the right of binding Ragabash. So all of your clothes start to bend, blend in with your fur and soon you are in lupus form. Dope. <laughs> um, and I, uh, we're going to say using my knowledge also as a dog trainer with Mike, uh, a lot of the communication would be body language, where my ears are, my tail, that kind of stuff. So what do I notice in terms of right away with smell, especially in regards to that mound? Give me a wits plus primal urge roll. I shall indeed. I just did my wits. That's two. So again, two successes. Two, two successes I'm, is I'm enough two man to today. let you know that death, you smell death. <laughs> I'm going to go uh, dig it up. Catcher. I'm going to dig it okay, up. Okay, great. Crowcatcher lopes off through the snow uh, and begins digging through the snow and immediately the body of one of the Silver Fang kinfolk. Kinfolk are people who are related to Guru but are not full Guru themselves. Um, a member of the uh, Silver, Folk kinfo uh, Silver Fang kinfolk, uh, it flops over in the snow dead. And you can see that they were kind of like underneath their parka, uh, crow catcher. They were dressed for this event. You know what I mean? Like they had like, you know, sigils on, you know, on like medallions with like tribal uh, markings of the silver fang. Uh, and the silver fangs, of course, hail from Russia. So they're not dealing with like stones and like, you know, natural things. They like literally make like, you know, big, beautiful amulets and stuff like that. So this guy was definitely here for the uh, to greet you after you return from your rite of passage. Uh, unfortunately, he is very, very dead, and you're not sure from what. But I will give you for free, Crowcatcher, that after you have flipped his body over, you see many humps in the snow scattered around mm -hmm. near uh, the hidden lake. Uh, Crowcatcher will... Um step back and let the others um, kind of do their thing, but he'll also just let out like a mournful howl. Not for the human kinfolk, but any wolves that were murdered at the site. Are there any uh, any animals around, like birds in the trees or anything like that? Well, it is a snowstorm still. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's I, you know, we said whiteout earlier. That's like, you know, unsurvivable so I, i'll just say that you have a blizzard going this far away from when you have initially enacted the uh the, the fetish uh weapon it created a whiteout but now it's just a blizzard um there are no animals there are no animals immediately uh visible but the you know that the hidden lake ha it has fish in it so if you approach the lake you may be able to contact them Okay, yeah, I'll do that and uh, use the bee speech and see if I can get anything from the uh, from the fish. You summoned it already. Yeah. See what the, the salmon have to say. <laughs> yeah, I heard a, a beast uh, respond to you. Summon. Okay, yep. so Jack Wild, <laughs> as a galliard, one of his gifts, one of his abilities, is beast speech. He can he can um, he can talk to animals, and so uh, Jack Wild steps uh, toward uh, really the cairn itself. The, the lake itself is the cairn, the center of spiritual power 
in this sept. And Jack Wild, as you step uh, near uh, the water, which is not not quite frozen over yet, and you kind of reach out your mind toward um, the, uh, the 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 fish in, within. Um, suddenly, um, you um, are uh, horrified and you recoil because you see that the water, it, it, like the ice on the water, is veined with black, and that some sort of weird sludge has desecrated the cairn. And in fact, Jack Wild, that is so disturbing to you, and you can't use your beast speech power because it looks like you now see a, a fish floating upon the water. And then you see several more through the snow floating upon the water. This cairn has been desecrated. It has been poisoned with some sort of strange sludge. You take a point of rage, or no, you make a rage roll. You make a rage roll uh, to see if you gain more rage at this. This would be like a uh, rouse roll in Vampire. I I got a success, but I also can I just choose to take a point of rage because I kind of feel like I you just can would. and you do. Because this would <laughs> piss you off. Like this is yeah, such a desecration. Um, and now, um, Jack Wild, you are far enough into the uh, into the cairn. That you do see something moving um, across the ice, uh, and not quite on the other side of the lake, but like uh, around the around the edge of the lake, toward the place where the path leads down back to like Flat Top Mountain and like uh, you know civilization. You see a, a dark figure moving about and um, uh, disturbing bodies in the snow, looking at the bodies and, and examining them. Uh, can I use camouflage and sneak up on them? You certainly can. So, uh, what do uh, the rules for camouflage say? That's another one of your gifts. I can bring it up right now. Uh, so camouflage, let me pull it up right now. Apologies. Uh, no, I know I got it, it helps me with stealth. I've got it right um, here. Um, okay, you have so it. you blend in with surround. Yeah, you blend in with the surrounding wilderness. The better to evade enemies or prepare ambushes. A deer spirit uh, teaches this gift. So you learned it from a deer spirit at, at some point. The difficulties to spot you increase by three. So in our werewolf hack, that makes them very tough. <laughs> it makes it very tough to spot you because I would say someone would need at least two successes to spot you in this blizzard and now they need five um and so are you going to sneak up on them yeah anton a anton and roll, uh, uh and uh crow catcher or not yet not yet anton and crow catcher are you going to follow on this little sneak attack on whoever this is on the other yeah. side of the uh the lake yeah let's run a pincher pincher movement you know, go around the side. Oh, great. Okay, so uh, I'm probably everybody also, roll... right before I take off, I probably just like click my tongue or something to let you guys know. Cool. Right, absolutely. And would everybody please roll their uh, dexterity plus stealth uh, as they sneak up, up on this person? And uh, would Dalton Riggs please roll his wits plus uh, alertness? No, yes. Hey, uh, Jared. I remember there's modifiers for being in in wolf mode. Um, I don't. I know it's on the sheet. Uh, let me see. You got plus two dex. Oh, okay, yeah. Roll? Lupus Thanks gets a plus two on dexterity. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you, gentlemen. Just like the old days. Woo! Five successes. I'm screwed. <laughs> How's it going, Dalton? Not so. <laughs> a not so. A not so silent strider. Well, I got, I had three die, uh, dice, yeah, dice, and I got uh, three successes. So there's, there's something that's, that's great. That's just the difficulty that they increased, right? Like, <laughs> well, no, the, that's great Reg because, yeah, there. no, that's right, exactly. So you succeeded in seeing uh, Anton. How many successes did you get? One. So you succeed in seeing uh, Anton and a uh, wolf kind of like running at you, but you don't see. 
uh, Jack Wild, who has used his gift of camouflage to make himself almost impossible to see in kind of weather like this. Um, and so what I'm going to say is, um, um, Jack Wild, you can do whatever you want to Dalton Riggs. One Pull action. Pull his pants down. Pull his pants down. Uh, and I'm Dalton, I don't know how you. how are you responding when you see the this this like um, you know this young man and this wolf running at you. Uh, I I uh, take I think how how far away are they? I guess I should say that uh, they're within like uh, all, all of a sudden this turn. I mean, not this turn, but next turn, doing something to you, hitting you in the face. You can definitely talk to them from this distance. Yeah. All right. Uh, do I know that there's a cairn here? Am I aware of that? Um, that's a really great question. Would you please roll your um, in, uh, let, let me make it your intelligence plus enigmas. Oh, thank you. Two, four, okay. One success. Okay, so um, you are not quite sure what's going on up here, uh, Dalton. You are are you know something's weird, obviously, because why are there are all these bodies just kind of laying dead around this lake? Uh, but you are not you're not positive it's a cairn or or what the political situation is here among the guru or even okay. uh, if there is a spirit bound here at all. And so um, you but, are a little bit yeah. in the dark about that. But I am seeing a man and a wolf running at me. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, okay. And uh, well, yeah. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. Go ahead, Brad. Uh, so uh, here's what I'd like to do. Tell tell me if I I can do this before he acts. Is I'd like to run up behind him like I'm running up toward his legs and shift into his bow and just plow into his legs and knock him face down. Oh, uh, you can do that if you make a uh, stamina plus primal or no, no, sorry, dexterity plus primal urge roll difficulty of, uh, I think, three. And um, I'm not going to just let him do that to you if you want. Well, actually, I actually have to because he's camouflaged. You don't even know yeah. he's there. Yeah. Okay. Normally uh, I would how, give how, you quickly, how quickly, how quickly, well, with, fa with okay. falling touch, uh, with falling touch, I, does it just come out of my hand, or can it be anywhere in contact with conscious will? Anywhere with conscious will. Okay, so so if my butt gets grazed by a big old hispo, I can I can pop him. <laughs> yeah, you could. <laughs> All right. So uh, well, just to um, explain, yeah. so um, uh, Dalton Riggs as an so I gotta miss the a, crit. Um... Oh God! Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, now it starts. Great. This is the best meat cute for werewolves ever. <laughs> Let me just look up yeah. Falling Touch. Put, right. put a bunch of because, volatile rage machines together at a cocktail uh, party, and just that's what's happening. This is why Gaia is doomed. She uh, made her soldiers <laughs> all be volatile rage machines when yeah. she probably should have made them be like really capable businessmen and cooperators. She should have um, chosen okay. penguins. Penguins would have been the way to go. It would have brought everybody. Together. Yeah, penguins or uh, yeah. Wow, what a great idea. Yeah, yeah. and that's why uh, everybody should tune in two weeks from now when we play Penguin: The Free. Led by Pongo, the Wear Dalmatian on his tugboat. Yeah, I'm he's he's their, their he's their ambassador. You know, he's he's the one that talks to the guru. I'm so sorry, White oh. Wolf, and everyone who loves this game. <laughs> Pongo. You're all welcome. Uh, yeah. So, um. Uh, you need to roll your willpower, uh, Dalton. Um, okay. And normally it's difficulty of the stamina plus athletics, but uh, in this particular case, I want you um, to tell me how many successes is that in your critical? It's four for the two tens, uh, Brad, and then how many successes uh, in addition? You said uh, willpower, which is resolve composure. Right? Uh, that was it. I just got the the – Two, uh, the two, two red dice on my, my rage dice. Okay, great. Um, so um, you need to get four successes here. Um, and yes, your willpower is equal to your oh, uh, composure resolve. plus resolve. Okay. Yes. Um, all right, I've got four dice. Uh, dice so I got a whopping <laughs> two, two successes. <laughs> okay, 
So falling touch does not work. Uh, um, no. Just to let the viewers know, our Arun player has a gift that allows him to touch someone and they like fall to the ground. Um, a great Fly thing for back. a warrior to have, and that's what the Arun are. But um, you don't activate it, and suddenly this enormous Hispo wolf smashes into your legs and throws you into the air, and you uh, you don't fall. The falling touch is on you, my friend Dalton Regs, because you <laughs> slam back down into the ice and snow hard. <laughs> knocking the wind out of you and now there is a wolf a man and a monstrous dire wolf um standing over you uh and looking down on you and you feel the hot breath of the uh dire wolf um that is the hispo form that uh brad just spoke of yeah. werewolves have like what are they five, like five forms they can take five they forms. can take yeah regular human which is called Hamid. They can take Glabro, which is like, it's called the near human, where you're like a wolf man. You're like hairier, your teeth are sharper, and you're stronger. The Krinos form, which is the full like wolf head with muzzle covered in fur. You have a tail, and you have banana length claws. <laughs> they can take the Hispo form, which is like a dire wolf, not a regular wolf. It's like an enormous, like six foot tall wolf. Game it would make you piss your pants if you saw it. <laughs> and they can take the lupus form, which is the form of a regular size, you know, uh, normal wolf. Uh, so our friend, uh, our friend Jack Wild has become a hispo uh, werewolf as he like attacks this intruder, throwing him into the air. And Dalton, you fall down into the snow, uh, leaving like a kind of a accidental snow angel as as the snow blasts up from the uh, the the force of your fall. Uh, and now these guys are looking over you. Um, should we continue with a? Is it going to continue yeah. to be a combat? That's up to Dalton, I think. So Dalton, what do you do? Uh, I'm gonna. So they're they're over me, right? Like uh, there's a his. Yeah, they're all looking uh, over man. you. Yeah, I, I think uh, <clears throat> I think we have uh, amongst us a language, even in our Hamid form, that is something of uh, submission, right? Uh, so I give the barest hint of that to say that I'm not going to do anything. And uh, I kind of hold my hands up and I go, I don't want to fight. But I, I want to put a foot on his throat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Great. Uh, Anton, uh, <laughs> cool as ice, puts his uh, uh, big hiking boot on your throat. All right. So you get uh, about, you I need think to I need to roll. yourself before my two friends rip you into shreds here, man. Uh, I think I need to rate. I, I think I need to roll. Uh, like, yeah, uh, roll to see if you gain rage. All right. That would How do you four rage? How do I roll to see if I gain rage? Is it just one die? Roll a single d10, and if it comes up okay. uh, lower than six, you gain rage. <clears throat> While this is going on, could one I? Success. Um, oh, never mind. Oh no! You succeeded, so you don't get you don't get more angry. Yeah. Except my no. toddler's angry. <laughs> oh no! Well, listen. Um, this is the toddler world of the apocalypse high school reunion. So if someone has to go make a toddler less angry, ain't nobody going to judge them around here. Ain't nobody going to go like, but we're pretending to be werewolves. <laughs> All right. I appreciate that because, you know, just hearing him cry would, would put me more in the werewolf. We'll see if he recovers. I'm just listening to the monitor. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. We're hearing lots of kids tonight. I mean, I'm getting a real window, a literal window into my friends' lives. Um, yeah, for real. So... I think some kids That's live great. in this house that I broke into, but I don't know. I, I just shut them up and lock the door. So I may have kids okay, on this well, side too. Can I, well, okay, this is going down. Applying. You're playing your own role playing Five year old yeah. hasn't picked the lock yet like he usually let's does. Posit, yeah. Let's pause at this intense moment and let me go make, like, get him chill. I'll be right back. Um, That's okay. Hey. I'm going to say, no, you don't have to be sorry. I think that what happens. I think that what happens is that Dalton immediately submits uh, and um, you can start questioning him and finding out about him. And uh, without Rusty's player's permission, I will allow someone to kind of do an interrogation role and find out everything about his character. But meanwhile, you guys can investigate the rest of the scene because come on, you guys, you know how these things work. He's not the real villain here. Yeah, I think I got to do the investigation role because those two guys are, are interrogation because those two guys are still wolves. Right. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Manipulation <laughs> so, plus 
investigation, uh, Anton. Manipulation plus investigation too. My, uh, uh, my, my uh, lupine interrogation techniques are top rated. I just want you to know that. Okay. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure all okay. the junkyard dogs are yeah. just <laughs> buddy in your hands. <laughs> um, do uh, is there anything I could tell just from my nose? Um, uh, like anything that I smell on him, uh, Jared? Um, uh, on Dalton? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, you, you're distracted when you're just like trying to smell by the smell of all the dead bodies mm -hmm. here that are fresh. Fair. Fair. Two successes means that, um, instead of me telling you everything about his character, when Rusty comes back, we'll let you tell, tell you two things about his character that you found out while you're questioning him. Uh, Russian mob style, Anton. Um, but the uh, but Crowcatcher and uh, Jack Wild. Is there anything else you, you want to see in the environment? Like uh, it, it's it seems like this guy's a patsy. As as uh, Anton investigates him, it seems like Dalton is not responsible here. Um, I will I'm gonna go check out one of the bodies them. and see if I can yeah. figure out how they died. Great, that sounds like a good idea. Anybody um, have since worm? No, not I. Okay, um, you um, you walk over to the body, and if you'd like, you can uh, tell me what what skills you would use to figure that out. Maybe medicine plus uh, resolve. Would you like to use that, or would you like to use uh, resolve plus investigation? Both good options. Uh, Brad is on a little bit of a we delay. So anytime I ask him a question, it seems like he's just thinking about it very, <laughs> very carefully. You have to be very serious with the Hey Mike, uh, yeah. do you does your lupus form smell anything odd? Anything non human, any um, you have to consider everything you do. Yeah. Um, so I would say based just what on Jared told me, um, Crowcatcher would look at you guys and kind of curl his lip and be like Fresh, dead, fresh, just killed, right? Kind of putting that across. And then he'll like blow his nose out uh, and go to sniff further. I'm going to go into like the heart of the cairn. Like, um, do we see like the, you know, the sept leader, any, any names that we recognize? I mean, obviously the guy that was waiting for us, but um, do, also do we see a cause of death? I got a question. So the red talons. Uh, let me let me answer Mike's questions. Uh, what, what, what's your question, Anton? Uh, would my mentor have been here? Oh, yes, he would have. Oh, your mentor shit. would have been here. Um, uh, but I can tell you uh, that as you um, dig through the bodies uh, looking for him, he is not there, Anton. Uh, or you haven't seen him yet. Crowcatcher, the Red Talons only sent you. Um, they did not. They were not going to be here to welcome you back. The Red Talons refuse to even parley with the other tribes in this area oh, yeah. of Alaska. They don't want to be near any Hamid breed werewolves. And mm -hmm. so they've only sent you, and they've sent you for a very special reason that you are privy to, uh, Crowcatcher, but that we don't have to share with the entire uh, the entire group yet. Um, and so uh, you do do you do notice someone of note, though. You notice that the uh, the Wendigo uh, like kind of big spokesman for the tribe in this area uh, whose name is, sorry, let me bring that. Oh, he's right here. Um, uh, sh her name is a uh, Karatak. Karatak. Um, she uh, lies dead in the snow. Um, and um, none of these people have like really uh, uh, claw marks on their bodies. They, um, they are or, well, actually, I take that back. She does have some claw marks on her bodies, and some of the other ones you're looking at do have claw marks on them. Uh, but but that doesn't seem to be the um, method of death for all of these uh, these people. Hmm. Um, I will... Karatek does have a wound, a big wound across her abdomen, um, dripping blood. Do uh, uh, I'm going to clear the snow off of her and kind of do like a – like at um, Jack – uh, to call him over. Um, and I'm going to like, up until he gets there, I'm going to look at the wound. Do I smell like rot or poison? Is there anything other than blood yes. or. Yeah. Okay. You smell like a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, um, of poison in, in the wound. Um, 
Um, it sa- it smells industrial, like uh, like uh, like whatever clawed her had like uh, maybe oil on its uh, claws. Mm. Um, that would be almost enough to spike up uh, the rage of Crowcatcher at least a little bit. But uh, in fact, but as a racket, now make a rage roll. All right. <laughs> no, you're making a rage roll. If you say that, I'm having you make a rage roll. I do. I, I like do. As as, roll. Yeah. I'm having so many uh, flashbacks to being 16 and being like, could I? And Jared going, actually, you do. And I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> of uh, course. It, it looks like I, I, I beat it. I'm good. Okay. So you're not getting more uh, full of rage yet. Uh, the guru, by the way, anybody who isn't familiar with Werewolf the Apocalypse, rage is their weapon to protect Gaia. Uh, or to uh, devolve into endless internecine conflicts with each other, you be the judge. Um, okay, so um, we all you need have, therapy. Um, yeah, so you have discovered this body, um, and Catatac, uh, the Wendigo representative uh, from um, the sept that um, she comes from, is called the Sept of Mother Sea, uh, and it's in Prince William Sound. The islands of Prince William Sound make up the bond of the Sept of Mother Sea. Uh, and uh, Karatek is actually from uh, a, a, a camp within the Wendigo tribe uh, who are called the Tornasuk. Um, so I will step back um, as Jack approaches, fully expecting him to become enraged or maybe lose his shit because maybe he knows this person. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to look around. Do I see any, I mean, I assume the storm blew away any tracks or anything, but do I smell that particularly that oil smell? Do I, do I trace that leading out of this place anywhere? Oh, um, give me a, a wits plus primal urge roll to trace that scent. Trace that scent, girl. Riding immense tea. Come on. Uh, wits and primal. You got it. Uh, one, two, three. You don't need to count out loud, Mike. Okay, good. Here we go. <laughs> Rolling. You can count out loud. Thanks, man. That makes me feel better. Can I be British finally? No. Uh, two successes. Two successes. Yeah. Um, it's coming from the cairn. Ugh. Like the cairn has been filled with what whatever's in the wound of poor cat attack here. Um, it, it, it has polluted the waters of the hidden lake uh, and the, 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 the cairn has been desecrated. Meanwhile, Dalton, you've been interrogated by Anton and forced to tell him two things because he got two successes on his interrogation favorite role color of manipulation and plus investigation. <laughs> what did you say? Hair color? Fa- favorite color. I like the office. And... <laughs> no. no, they have to be important guru things or oh. things about your character's backstory. Okay, so so give me the rundown. He, he used something on me. Uh, he used a gift. He just used his my, manipulation my. plus investigation. He used his Russian <laughs> interrogation techniques to get some shit out of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. My you, guys are all still, <laughs> you guys are all still standing over me? Or? No, we, <laughs> no, no. They, no the other me. two have moved on to examine the bodies. Okay, all right. So we're, just having, one. We're, just, we're just having a conversation. Okay. <laughs> I just realized that 20 years later, the, the you know, it used to be one of us just wouldn't show up or would show up really late. And 20 years later, the equivalent of that is, oh, shit, I got to go take care of my kid. I don't know. What's... I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm surprised that Rosie hasn't just like walked in the room one time when I'm playing like vampire and just like thrown a book. Uh, <laughs> actually, that maybe did happen on an episode. Anyway, uh, yeah. my friend Dalton, what did you tell our friend Anton? So did he ask? He did. He just said, "Tell me two things about yourself." Or did he ask a particular? No, question? no. Come on, we have to abstract. What are you this doing a here? Bit. Explain he used yourself. His, he used his investigation plus the manipulation. He got two successes, and okay. I, your storyteller, have ah. ruled that you've told him told him okay. two. Important You're trapped about on a yourself. desert island and you can only have one book. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Five love languages. Okay, now. All um, right. You guys have made jokes so long that I am now ruling what you have told him. I tell I tell him, I'm, uh, my name is Dalton Riggs. I'm a silent strider. That's it. Okay. Okay. Um, and you tell him, uh, because he got two successes, I've decided 
that you uh, were led here by a, a, a spirit. Yeah, a spirit okay. of the dead. Yeah. Then um, I say, and then I say, uh, wait, he still got his foot on me, right? Yeah. Okay. I said maybe. And now you, and now you better take your foot off me. All right. Okay. Well, I leave it for like another second just to be, you know. And then <laughs> just take it off. You're Anton. Just, yeah. just so he knows that I made the decision to take it off myself. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I cleaned up my room because I wanted to. It's a big boot. Um, thousand one, thousand two. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I would like the uh, the Wendigo. What was her name? Catatac. Uh, yeah, Catatac. Catatac. And um, uh, I just kind of like, I'm still in hispo, and I'm just gonna sit on my haunches by your body for a moment, and then howl a long and mournful howl. Very good. Um. Howl, a long and mournful howl. Um, that is going to give you something. You're kind of mourning the dead. You don't have the right of mourning uh, on your sheet, but what I will allow you to have is, um, well, you haven't spent any Gnosis yet, have you? No, I haven't. Uh, but you have Gnosis, equal, starting when you start, you have Gnosis equal to your permanent Gnosis, but you can actually get higher than that. So go ahead and take a point of temporary Gnosis um, for just sort of, you know, Howling for your fallen, uh, your fallen sister, um, and I would like anybody else who's kind of interested in finding out okay. what happened here to tell me what kind of skills they use to do that. Mm. I'm going to um, start with Anton. Anton, what skill do you use to figure out what has happened here? Clearly, the guru that were here to welcome you back for your rite of passage have been slaughtered. By something with poison claws, and the cairn has been desecrated. You know what? Roll to see if you gain more rage. Roll a d6 right now, Anton, uh, and Jack Wild, and Dalton Riggs, and Pro Catcher. Because of what has happened here, it finally starts with the howl of Jack Wild. It finally starts to kind of sink in what's happened here. Everybody see if they gain more rage. And then, Anton, tell me what you do to figure out what's happening. What? Or if you leave, or if you do something else. How do I know if I get more rage? I wrote a five. You do. A six, uh, six or above, you do not. Five or lower, you do. I have moved up as well. I'm at four now. I'm just at two. Uh oh. Yeah, um, okay. So I could use. I, I, ha I have some streetwise, but that's really I not going to help me here. I think mostly what I want to do is try to go find my mentor, my uncle, and see where he's at. I have a rituals of one, which might let me know kind of what they were doing. <laughs> But I think mostly I want to go find my mentor and talk to him and get in contact with him. I probably can't get cell phone signal out here. So I think uh, somewhere where I can cannot. get a call through. You probably cannot. But on the other hand, um, excuse me, I'm plugging something in. On the other hand, you can um, you can like just sort of use your streetwise, as you said, uh, to kind of figure something out here. Would you like to give me a wits plus streetwise role? Uh, to see if you figure something out, because uh, what we haven't revealed maybe about our friend, uh, our friend uh, Anton, is that his parents were in the Russian mob and came to Alaska to get away from the uh, the heat in Russia, and so um, he knows a, a thing or two about a thing or two when you're when you're dealing with a bunch of dead bodies. <laughs> Anton, you realize that a prime suspect in this case would be someone who is not. Who should be here but is not here because um, you can't know where this sept is unless you have privileged information, and you can't get into this sept uh, without without certain somebody um, knowing you. Yeah, without somebody knowing you. Um, there's more to it, but I'm gonna let people roll other things to find it out. But regardless, you start pulling over all the bodies, Anton, and your uncle is not among them. What is your uncle's uh, name? Do you have it? Because I have it here if you don't. Uh, no, go ahead. Alan Jurich. Your uncle is a state trooper and a guru named Alan Jurich. His <laughs> guru name that some people make fun of is Blue Ice. <laughs> He's a nice. Gatorade flavor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, that's what people make fun of, but he takes it very seriously. Okay, he's a so, big old badass state trooper. So I think I need, we need to uh, we need to go find him. So I look at I look at uh, Dalton. I say, MacGyver, me and you, we're going. MacGyver. Um, at that Great. point, I think uh, Crowcatcher would come padding up, 
and like reference toward the lake uh, and look at the care and ground. It's been like, everywhere. <laughs> All tainted. <laughs> like, Anton, that's when I would just remind your character that the Red Talons didn't send any representative at all. And they might know uh, a privileged thing or two about uh, this sept since they were invited. Good point. Um, so so do we... Do, <laughs> do we feel any, like, imminent danger? Like, this like this stuff that's in the ground is, like, going to open up, um, you know... Tell me how you find that out. What uh, skill are you using? So, yeah, I think I'm just using... Um, uh, the you know the wolf investigation skills just uh, primal urge probably and just basic investigation um, and again having trained in what I've trained to be able to kind of walk with humans and stuff um, I think I would maybe notice more but okay. I can for it give too. me okay give me a wits plus primal urge roll again I will do that okay so back to uh, Jared, can I just assume that Dalton has picked up on the fact that there's utter destruction here and these guys are flabbergasted and scared, not scared, well, scared and, and raging? Yes. Something that I allow in my games is for things that the players have figured out to be things that their characters have figured out. Because right, I nice. think it's really weird if I were to be like, nope, he doesn't get it yet. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing? Jack Wild. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so three successes on my roll, Jared. Three successes. Okay. Yes, so you're sir. using your wolf senses, right? Yeah. Uh, you're using your wolf senses, uh, and you do become concerned because you see um, something is moving around uh, in the uh, in the snow. You finally catch like sight uh, and, and like hear prey moving through the snow, but when you kind of like you know focus in on it with your with your wolf senses, it's giving off that horrible like smell of like crude oil um, uh, and you see that there is something kind of crawling and loping out of the lake on its belly like a, a fish yeah. or like a sea turtle uh, and it's leaving a trail of black sludge as it slowly moves toward one of the bodies on the shore crow catcher oh, is immediately going to flip and start growling straight at it and I want to go ahead and shift to Krinos too uh, okay now the deal with Krynos in our hack is that you can only stay in Krynos the amount of turns that you have rage because, uh, or, or, or like a little bit over or under, because every turn you're going to roll rage again. And unless you, uh, unless you succeed, you start losing rage every turn you're in Krynos in our, in our special rules that we've concocted here, which makes sure that, uh, unlike the old game from the 90s, you're not like a werewolf, a full werewolf riding on a horse, shooting <laughs> a, a six shooter, I'm at talking to people right at Arby's. No. Like I'm a werewolf. No. Like you know. Um, so every round that you are in the Krynos, the the full werewolf form, you'll mm. roll to see if you can stay in that form. Are you going to roll to transform into Krynos now? Uh, well, how far away is this thing? It is a hundred yards away. Okay, so then I'd like to wait, and I have a very specific combat plan I want to do, so just let me know when I get over there or when we're rolling into that. Great. You have noticed it. You pointed out to the others, but I think that they were all investigating, and, too. And uh, so hearing Crow moment, Catcher growl? Yeah, he does. I, I flip into this immediately. Okay. Then Jack's going to, still in Hispo, come around your side and start circling around, cued by your growl. Cool. Okay, great. Dalton, anything you want to do, Anton, when you hear this growl? Yeah, I'm going to uh, drop, drop my bag and take off my parka and uh, sort of stand up next to them in the line of them. This, this significance of like, yeah, I'm with you guys. Um, so everybody kind of gets uh, ready. Anton, what are you doing? I guess, uh, I guess yeah, I'll just start walking over there. <laughs> okay, so the let me guys. set... <laughs> I'm letting the other guys go at it, man. I was like, here comes action. Here comes adventure. I guess I walk over there. <laughs> that's um, Anton. Come on. Hey, that's, yeah, that's yeah. Anton. That's how Anton uh, comports himself. Listen, uh, to give you clearly the scene, okay? Um, something black and oozing is sort of crawling through the snow toward one of the bodies. It's come up the bank of the lake 
and is crawling toward one of the bodies that is covered in the snow. Uh, right? Nope. Let me finish. Uh, <laughs> about about 25 yards behind that body is a collection of like cabins and things that kind of cling to the edge of this lake where, I mean, very crude cabins, almost like lean-tos, where they would have conducted your right and, and built a fire, uh, but the fire is now covered in ice and snow. So there are some structures kind of built into the side of this sort of culvert or ravine here uh, on the edge of the lake, about 25 yards beyond that. I have Anton Dalton coming up one end uh, behind uh, behind our friend uh, Crowcatcher, who is growling at the thing, and it looks like our Hispo friend is trying to you know kind of circumnavigate the lake, which is a small lake, but it will mean that you. I mean, maybe you're kind of coming up onto the edge of the valley and coming around that way because it would be very tough to go all the way around the lake. You under, does that make sense, Brad? Wait for it. Yeah, there it was. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to kind of yeah, come at it from okay. The side. <laughs> nice. So, so um, I want Brad to give me an athletics uh, plus dexterity roll because the his hispo form is literally leaping onto the side of this like kind of valley, like onto the rocks to kind of get around to the other side of this thing. Uh, I just want to like sigh, check the pistol that's in the back of my belt, <laughs> and just make sure the clip's in and it's loaded. He sighed okay, literally. Great. That's awesome. That's great. I love that. Can can I uh, roll just just to see if this, this three like... successes on that? Great. Um, yeah, go ahead, uh, Rusty. What what do you just roll just for? if if I know anything about what this thing is, like uh, intelligence enigmas, maybe. Hey, there's a very interesting uh, idea. Um, intelligence plus uh, enigmas will do it. Give All me right. that roll. Two successes. Um, this is a bane. It is right. a uh, a spirit of the worm. It is not a living creature. And the fact that it is moving toward a dead body is concerning. And now we are going to enter sort of a combat state since everybody's clearly getting ready for combat to happen. And in V5 and in this hack, everybody tells me what they're going to do. I tell them the dice pull they're going to use. And then everybody rolls at once. Uh, and if two people are opposing, whoever gets the most successes is the winner of that conflict. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, now what I will tell you is that as uh, a Jack Wild in Hispo form kind of lopes down off of the slope again, kind of you're almost like going sideways, Jack, and snow is being like tossed up as you come yeah. down on the other side of the thing, you see that many black blobs are kind of now crawling oh. out of the lake and um, jumping onto the corpses that are laying around here. Uh, and so in this turn, your enemies, these black globs, are going to jump onto bodies. That is what's going. To, they're going to do this turn. What are you going to do this turn, Anton? Uh, try to shoot one. Okay, Anton, you're going to give me a dexterity plus firearms roll. What are you going to do this turn, Dalton? Uh, speed of thought, uh, to, to, to try to knock, to try to kick the head of one of these things before it reaches the body, the nearest one. I love that. Um, you are going to, uh, use your speed of thought gift, which I would love if you looked up and saw if it costs you any gnosis or anything like that. Uh, and then you're going to give spend me one gnosis. Yeah. Okay. Spend one gnosis and then give me a dex plus brawl roll in a minute In a minute. Don't roll it yet. Uh, Jack wild. What are you going to do this turn? And there he is. Jack. All right. So, Jack. Uh, I would like to take off running, leap in the air, uh, shift into crowds, and uh, bring my uh, hand back down on one of these things. Great. Give me a. Um, comes another give storm. me a. Well, that's a lot. Give me a primal urge roll and a, I'll let you do both, a primal urge roll and a strength plus melee roll. And uh, my friend, uh, my friend Crowcatcher, what are you going to do this round? 
Well, I'm glad you said Bane because my initial um, uh, plan was to run, shift to Krynos, grab a corpse, and hurl it at the nearest one uh, coming out of... I can't give up corpse thrower, Adam. I'm sorry. I just I held a torch for him this whole time. But now that I'm aware that it's a bane, I don't think I want to do that. But what I am going to do is start destroying all the bodies that are closest to the things emerging, ripping out the throats, dismembering everything and anything I can do uh, to tear apart these vessels. He doesn't like um, people. That's really interesting. Okay, so um, if you want to do that, that's such an interesting role. I think that if you want to do that, I want you to. That's what you're doing, right? Are you? You're also shifting to Krynos. Is that what you told me? Shifting to Krynos, and I'd like just a little sprinkle of sugar on the top. I think I can fuel my rage simply by the fact that these are probably mostly Hamid kinfolk, and I doubt there's any lupus among them. So I'd like to use that to fuel it as well. But yeah, that's the plan. Shift, rip, and tear all the bodies that the Banes are trying to get to. Okay, give me a stamina plus primal urge roll for your change, and then you can start um, giving me a. Um, giving me a strength plus how do you destroy stuff what would be a great role for that i brawl? think i think we'll, brawl would be good is that does that work for you oh that definitely works for me <laughs> okay so everybody can I, now roll yes wait, can i get Medicine. in at least shifting to glabro i know everybody got shift and actions so can I at least get myself in the glabro no just be a dude just you rolling like hey, i'm going to fight some things can I at least get into Glabro? Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's also my upcoming black metal album. Can I at least get into Glabro? Um, you you may uh, you may. Uh, I got it. Uh, so go ahead and roll. Ain't nobody telling me what they got I yet. I got one success on the Stop. change. No, no, don't you. tell me yeah. yet. We're on the way. You can't hear me. But that's not how this works. So uh, the way this works is I'm gonna go. Uh, this is how many of the of the Bane succeeded in getting on top of bodies. One, two, three, only four. Four Banes succeeded in like kind of like latching onto bodies this turn, and they, they're crawling into the mouths of those bodies. And now in the same turn that I asked it every asked everybody to roll stuff, we're gonna go through and see how they did. Uh Dalton, I mean I'm not Dalton, Anton, how'd you do? I botched it. So gun jams, <laughs> Shit. gun, <laughs> yes. gun jams. I, I say some kind of Russian curse word that I was taught by my Suka grandparents <laughs> and just kind of throw it. Oh, um, that sucks. So you're like aiming at like one of the bodies as like the, the black ooze, like, like, you know, wiggles down its throat and you're like, I'll just headshot this thing. And, um, your gun hasn't survived the weather. Goddamn Jack Wild and his goddamn fetish <laughs> made this weather, and your gun's all jammed up. So, yes, as you say, you say a Russian curse would, and you throw it aside. And Dalton, did you succeed in transforming to Glabro? I didn't roll for it, and I'm so sorry because you. Stamina plus roll. primal urge, roll now! <laughs> Stamina plus primal urge. <laughs> I'm sorry, Daddy. Uh, no, it's okay. It's just funny to me, like, when you're like playing role playing games and you're like, it's combat time. It feels like my friends are always like, all right, time to slow things down. <laughs> two, success, two successes. Nice Great. You managed to get into Glabro Dude. form, and so <laughs> you have become the near human. Suddenly your your muscles like <laughs> tear at like your 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 big uh, parka you were talking about. Like the parka is like not big enough to fit you anymore. It looks like you put on like a kid's jacket, uh, but you're still mainly a human. Your hair just becomes even more of a crazy mullet. And yes. uh, is the mullet Dalton, it just it just looked like what's his name from Infowars? That's basically that's that's <laughs> that's Clabro. Dalton, uh, what do you uh, what do you do? Uh, yeah, my my goal was to uh, kick the head off of the nearest bane crawling to a body. Speed of thought, my way over there, and, and right. Pop. You spent this. You spent the uh, gnosis, so you get speed of thought. So I'll tell you what. Uh, how did you do on that attack roll? Have you made it yet? Uh, I got roll? six successes. Holy shit. Well, I'll allow you to um, really kick the head off of the one that Anton was trying to fire at. Your boot hits it. Does Don't wear cowboy boots. Uh, he, he, did, he does today because this is going to be His name is Dalton. He has to. Yeah, he yeah. has to. Yeah. Um, you, you literally kick the head off a corpse and it goes flying. <laughs> yes. And the thing that's inside of it never got down the throat. 
and then you see it like kind of like spidery like limbs kind of flinging around and you kick it into the icy water and I'm going to say that that one's out of commission. There are just three left that have managed to glom onto bodies. Um, and uh, then we come to, uh, I'm going to do Jack uh, Wild. Jack, how did your attack go? Jack attack. <laughs> Jack attack. So I uh, got one success on the change, three on the attack. Okay, one on the change, three on the attack. One means you're not transformed yet. You stay in Hispo form. Three on the attack, I think, means that you are now fighting with something. Uh, and uh, one of the kinfolk that has this thing inside of it, like its eyes open and, and they're just black on black and black blood is bleeding out of their eyes and it opens its mouth and this like oil starts to bubble out of it and it reaches up and it grabs you as you grab it, but you do uh, three like lethal damage to it right away. Um, and please just describe what you're doing to it. So uh, as it, it grabs me, it's okay. As it grabs me, I take my big dire wolf jaws and just clamp down on its face, like teeth mm -hmm. up and under the jaw down into the front of the face and just rip. Right. Okay. So you haven't quite ripped it yet, but you've done three lethal damage. I will make that. Uh... I will make that distinction or aggravated really because you're a werewolf. Um, okay, three aggravated damage to that one. Uh, and it is fighting with you. And now, Procatcher, um, how about you, my friend? All right, I got oh, four. Yes. Go ahead. That's perfect. Okay, Procatcher, you made a very interesting decision. You decided <laughs> to destroy bodies before they got possessed, and you got four successes, right? Yeah, and then hilariously later on, he'll be like, "Banes? What Banes? I thought they just I just needed to take." But what are you guys talking? Okay. Uh, so on no, the change uh, for success, okay, and uh, then full Krynos. Yeah. So then I added the dice pool for Krynos to the attack, and I got uh, nine successes. Ooh, baby! Here's what happens. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna rule that's so that that's focus. enough that Crowcatcher actually. Let's see. There, there's um, there are three more left, right? There are three more uh, uh, banes crawling into bodies. Crowcatcher, you are you're not trying to really attack the banes or fight them. You're just trying to destroy bodies so that they can't yeah. use the bodies, right? Yeah. So with that many successes, I'm going to rule <laughs> yeah. that you destroy completely four bodies. Okay. Nice. Uh, but the fifth body, as you slash into it, the body of Karatek, who to all senses earlier was dead. Oh no. As your claws slice into her, she goes, ah, and like comes uh, fully to life. Fuck. Uh, was not dead at all, was playing possum somehow. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, jumps to her feet and is going to try to shift into her crinos form. Ooh. Yeah. Mm, mm, sweet book. Uh, what a, a ragged and primal scream Jared Logan just did for us, ladies and gentlemen. Can we just take a moment <laughs> to enjoy that? It was lovely. That was Toddler Krynos right there. That was fantastic. Thank you. Uh, oh, wait, no, no. <laughs> she screams as she. Um, no. Um, so she has actually not gotten enough successes on her stamina plus primal urge roll. So oh, as God. she stands, she's still shifting. But um, she was playing possum. She had used maybe, you know, you knew that she was dead earlier. So she had used some sort of gift, which gave her the appearance of the dead, but is very much alive and um, is uh, jumps to her feet and screams at you. And now we are in a new round. Anton, what are you going to do this round? Is there anyone that's in striking distance from me where I could run and then do an action towards them? Um, yeah, one of the um, Banes that's like hasn't been touched uh, is uh, is right near you. Yeah. Okay, so I just want to like... one of the bodies that hasn't been attacked yet. Okay, by a Bane, it has one. No, by your by your. I'm sorry, that was so unclear. By your party, like it has a Bane inside of it now, but no one has attacked it or done anything to it. Okay, I just want to try to run up to it and shove my hand down his throat. Okay, give me a uh, with the, in Hamid form. Yeah. Give me a, uh, give me a uh, strength plus brawl roll. And now, uh, Dalton, what are you going to do this turn after kicking the head off of a, of a zombie? Can you tell me what I, what I 
can see in front of me. Great. Like, yes, that's a good yeah. idea. Let me do that right now. So um, there are uh, three uh, like corpses that have been animated by these bangs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the farthest one away from you, probably, oh, maybe 50 yards, is being attacked and like wrestled by your friend Jack Wild in Hispo form. There are Right at your feet is the one whose head you just kicked off into the mm -hmm. lake. But then between that one and Jack Wilde, there are two. One of which it looks like Anton is running toward. The other one is unmolested, is just sort of like getting up. Uh, and then kind of behind you, like Crowcatcher was like kind of ripping bodies to shreds so that they couldn't be used by the Banes. And you hear like some kind of howling happening behind you. So okay. what would you like to do? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up to the next two. Uh, that are that are okay. no that nobody's gotten to yet, um, yeah. and I think speed of thought lasts the whole scene. So um, right. I'm pretty fast, and I think I, I want to try and shift into Krynos, uh to take down these two. Okay, um, great. Give me a uh, stamina plus primal urge roll to do that, yes, and then sir. are you attacking a, one of them as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my my intent is to rush over there and knock its head off with a, a claw and paw. We, we, we okay, can. so you're going to also roll a strength plus brawl roll. And now I will ask Jack Wild, what would you like to do this turn? Okay, do I finish uh, shifting this turn? Um, uh, you will finish shifting at the end of this turn. Okay. Uh, then... Uh, I think if my, my teeth are still clamped down on this thing's face, I just want to shake the shit out of it and try to just rip its head off. Shake it, That's a super wolfish attack. So um, why don't you use Primal Urge instead of Brawl now? Uh, add that to your strength. And, uh, and did you tell me Dex Brawl? Okay. I said Strength Brawl, my friend. Strength, strength Brawl. My bad. Oh, strength. No problem. Let's and... Uh, Crowcatcher, your turn. What are you going to do this round? Uh, well, if she's still having trouble shifting, then I'm going to do everything Messy I can. Messy crit! Oh, Sam. sorry, sorry. I wasn't supposed to tell you. You don't <laughs> tell me yet! <laughs> um, okay, so, yes. Um, yes. I, okay. yeah, so, so if she's still having trouble shifting, I'm just going to try to rip her throat out. Okay, great. Um, so that's going to be a Dex plus Brawl roll. Guru and Krynos versus Guru and Krynos. Uh, and uh, we'll see how all of this goes. But uh, I can tell you that there are two now up and running, and they're facing off against uh, uh, Dalton and Anton, really. So as Dan D Dalton and Anton are both going to have their roles sort of uh, – and also, I'm, uh, also Jack are going to have their roles contested versus these things. So – here we go. First versus Dalton. Dalton, how did you do on your strength plus brawl roll? Uh, I did shift to Kronos first successfully. Oh, okay, what was your what were your successes on that? Two successes. Great. Um, I think that's not quite enough to like instantly shift to Kronos. Okay. So I think I'm oh, gonna okay. have to stay in your Hamid form just this round. Well, then did you roll to attack? Uh, yes, but I rolled as if I was in Kronos because I thought I had success. Roll as if you are in Hamid, my friend. Roll again as if you're in I was actually, I'm in Glabro. I'm in Roll as if you're in Glabro. Glabro. Roll as if you're in Glabro. The strength plus Glabra. two. I'm so excited. Six successes. I did better than last time. Right. Even in Glabro form, you got six yeah. successes. Yeah, yeah. This thing only got this thing only got um, only got two successes on its attack. So I can tell you that as you're approaching this corpse, it turns to you, and it was the corpse of uh, a young woman, uh, probably a kinfolk of the Silver Fangs, because uh, she had a long blonde ponytail uh, under her parka. But as she turns to you, it's your <laughs> wife. Or your your girl, rather, Andrea, <laughs> oh, that you've been man. looking for. Uh, and she's I, like, don't know. Uh, but you don't listen to that. You go ahead and you punch her for all you're worth. 
and your Glabro form getting six mad successes. And as you hit her with full force, you realize it's another worm. It's another worm live. Listen to me. It's another okay. worm lie because okay. uh, as you hit her, um, she kind of doubles over and transforms into what her, her true form is now that she's become a form, Fomori. She is a hulking corpse, broad shouldered, bare skulled, with huge claws and fangs and wild staring eyes. Um, and uh, you hit her hard uh, and she takes that form, and you have done. Um, four superficial damage. Uh, That's got to be our first this. single. Single. <laughs> Hulking so corpse. Gla Glabro claws don't do aggravated. Rotting intensity you have, brings you. You have claws? You have Glabro? You have excellent They're not fingernails, banana Glabro. <laughs> They're not banana sized, that's for sure. No, okay, like, um, I don't think you have tank. claws in Glabro. If I'm wrong about hmm. that, please write me, care of P.O. Box, from the blood. Uh... <laughs> Uh, that's uh, Hollywood, California, nine zero six six six. And be sure to put on your uh, your letter uh, very annoying correction to a ruling that you made, Jared. I think that the Glabro has like long fingernails, not like like baby sharp. carrot size, right? We're, we're using <laughs> baby <laughs> vegetables. <laughs> baby carrots are good. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty. Thank solid. you, Adam. Baby yes. carrot. Uh, baby carrot. But you have done uh, three uh, bashing damage. I mean, four bashing damage to this thing, which is nothing to sniff at. And so yeah. now I move to uh, uh, I move to Anton. How did you do with your attack, Anton? So I wrote I wrote five dice and I got three ten ten nine seven. Three ten ten nine seven. Were any of those tens rage dice? Uh, I, what What do you mean? Okay, so how many rage do you have right now? I started you at one. Did I tell you that you gained any? Uh, I'm at two. Yeah, you went to two. Okay. So One of my two dice of is red. Dice, yeah, so that means that's <laughs> a rage die. You should have yeah, two it, rage dice. Yeah, it was dice. a ten. I'll start oh, doing that now. you just, that's okay. You No, no, you got it. So whatever your rage is, make sure you add that many like red die. And if got those it. crit, which is what happened, you messy crit it. This creature in attacking you rolled eight dice. And guess how many successes it got? Uh, two, seven. baby. Two. Are you scared? It. It got two out of eight dice, uh, and your attack is a messy critical. So um, I guess what I'm saying is, um, how uh, you're putting your your fist down as far down its throat as possible, then shifting to Krynos. <laughs> okay, Call give me a stamina a plus primal urge roll. <laughs> Beautiful. One, two, three, four. Four successes is enough to instantly switch to Krynos. And so what happens is Anton is like, you know, shouting something in like his pigeon Russian that he learned from his grandpa. As his fist connects with the mouth, he shifts into Krynos and becomes <laughs> nine nasty. feet tall. His hands become twice as long and you completely rip <laughs> open the skull of this corpse uh, and uh, take away this thing's shell. Uh, and now the oozing Bane-like spirit is like uh, hanging from the end of your claw, Anton. That attack was so badass that it kind of took away their shell. You just you moved quickly enough and shifting to Krynos just as you attack. That did a huge... So, so um, now there are only two of these like walking corpses left. One is tangling with uh, Jack Wilde in his Hispo form. The other one is tangling with Dalton Riggs, who is just a, who who will be in Krynos this next round, but who just like has pounded it pretty hard. Um, and now let me go to uh, my friend uh, Jack Wild. Jack Wild, how did you do this turn? Oh, you got a messy crit. So I got uh, nine successes. I rolled, yeah, I rolled four ten, four crits. Um, two of them were on rage dice. So, okay, yeah, so that's messy a messy crit. critical. <laughs> that's a definitely a messy crit. So, this thing did better against you, this thing, than, than the other people. This thing got four successes against you, but your messy crit clearly wipes it out. And so, would you please describe what happens? I think that you're, did you get any successes beyond the two tens that you rolled? Okay. So, 
Yeah, yeah. So I have a total of nine successes. Um, okay, great. So, so five uh, successes. Yeah. So I'm gonna as I'm shifting into Krinos from Hispo. Yeah. So as I'm shifting into Krinos from Hispo, I'm standing up to my nine feet tall height and just shaking the hell out of this thing. And and as I start to get hands instead of paws, I want to grab it by the shoulders so that I hold the body rigid as I'm just shaking the head. Um, which I'm assuming rips off. Um, yes, the, the creature is defeated. You uh, rip off the top half of it. Uh, and the main <laughs> spirit, not defeated, but the, uh, the combination zombie foam war creature uh, by the way, that's what they call it when a Bane spirit infests a body. They are a Fomori. Um, the Fomori is ripped in, in two. Uh, you rip off the top half of this person. Uh, and um, now I'm going to ask Crowcatcher. Crowcatcher, how did you do? Because uh, you were going to just attack uh, this guru, not a Fomorian zombie. This guru, Karatak, who was playing possum. How do you do? Can I just use my time to say quickly that I really want Anton with the face, uh, the fist thing to just be like, comrade, you look like you need potassium and some bananas. Right in. Good. Thank you for letting me do that. Now I got uh, All right, now. five successes. Adam, think about, think about whether you're going to do that. Five successes. Okay. Well, she's kind of busy transforming. And I think that um, her transformation, she's still going to defend herself while she's transforming. So here she goes to do that. And she gets... She only gets three successes. So two of your successes get through, and you have already shifted to Krinos, right? That is mine, baby. Yep. Um, okay. So you do two aggravated damage to her two right across ag. her throat as she's Ooh. shifting into Krinos. And right now, um, her, her body is knitting back together, but she can't talk. Like, she's like, like so that howl was like, Rah! and then you, like, slice uh, the vocal cords of this creature, <laughs> and it's like, Awesome. Um, and now everybody needs to make a uh, rage roll for me. Roll one six sided die and tell me if it's a success or fail. So does it is it six or above? That's a success. Five or below? That's a fail. Um, okay, a fail means that you uh, lose a point of rage. Uh, Okay, success means you stay at the normal rage, Anton. The ra you have two rage, you stay at two rage. Um, if you failed, which it let, sounds like a crow catcher did, you go down to one rage. Yeah, and then how about you, uh, Jack Wild? Did you succeed or fail? Uh, in the in the rage roll, or yes, sir. Right. Okay, sorry, uh, Tyler reports. Uh, I succeeded, so I stay at four. Okay, great. Succeed. And how about you? Succeed. You stay at three or wherever you were at. Maybe you were at two. Uh, rag a that's wild. Um, okay. Um, new round. Uh, there's only one, like, kind of like, uh, s s you know, a zombie uh, animated by these, like, sludge spirits left. Uh, and it's tangling with Dalton. Uh, Crowcatcher is tangling with uh, Cat Attack, who has miraculously returned to life and has made it to full Krinos form now. And now uh, I will ask everybody in order what they're going to do this round. Let's start with Anton. Mike, this is for you. Uh, yes. So I exploded <laughs> the head, right? With yeah. Hand. I want to grab that corpse. Yes. I want to throw it at the guy Mike's fighting. Oh. And I want to follow it in, right? So it's like a throw and sprint. I'm so oh, glad I love it. Get you can't see down here because I'm so aroused right now. I'm just, I'm just turned on. Just rigid. Give me rigid. a give me Rhinos. a g oh, strength so plus melee roll, and you have to get three, three successes to hit your target with the uh, corpse. Oh, this is okay, the life, but boys. don't don't tell me what you got yet, <laughs> Dalton Riggs. You're still dealing with one of these zombies. What do you do? I uh, they my pretended goal is to I'm, be your lover. I know, dude. Uh, can I can, can I just, just hit her? Can I just frenzy? <laughs> um, I mean, actually, you know, maybe could I roll for a frenzy? Because that, that was... I think you should. Yeah. How, yeah, how do I roll should. for frenzy? Do I just roll my rage? I'll tell you. In our hack of the system, roll your willpower, mm -hmm. but take away... Take, roll your willpower plus one-third of your gnosis, which for in your case is one. So willpower okay. plus one, 
but then take away as many rage as you have from the dice pool. So what is your current rage? Uh, four. So the no, other take thing four is away from that dice pool. So I'm going to roll one die. That's right. And if you don't succeed, you frenzy. This is awesome. Come on, <laughs> frenzy. Yeah. Zero successes. <laughs> um, yes, uh, the Arun... The Arun completely frenzies. Uh, and of course, when you frenzy, you have to take Krynos form. If you weren't in it before, Dalton, you are now. Okay. You're in Krynos form. And uh, you have to attack or move towards something to attack uh, until you uh, until something changes. Like, until the object of your... Well, I mean, you'll attack other people, actually. You'll attack other friends in this, in yeah. this frenzied state, so but think, every round will keep making that rage roll to see if your rage goes down. Okay, I so, think... Um, I th oh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I think uh, I just, in, in frenzying, I just grabbed the thing's head uh, with one giant clawed hand, and I just look to whatever action is happening near me, and I just bring it with me. And I'm just running, <laughs> running with it, and, like squeezing its brain. Like a lunchbox. That's great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make that a dex plus brawl roll. Uh, no, sorry. Strength plus brawl roll. And you need to get four successes for that to happen. Okay. So that's six, happen. Happen. six successes. Well, wait. Don't tell me yet. We'll oh, totally. My bad. Because it will be versus its defense and everything. Um, and my friend, uh, Jack Wild, what do you do this turn now that you've bested your foe? All right, so that Bane is still uh, there, right? Uh, so I just defeated the Fomori. Um, but I think seeing seeing the fallen Wendigo being reanimated is going to just kindle the, the fire in me. I mean, that desecration uh, cannot cannot stand, man. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, Jack, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do something, and I know I'm coming to you a little slow, but... I, I have I have to interrupt you there. I want you to make a wits plus occult roll when you are looking at the Wendigo being reanimated. Okay. There there's the album title. This desecration will not stand. <laughs> we have we have several albums at this point. Man. It's so good. This, this yeah, desecration will not music. stand, man. For any For success. Success. I mean she she crinosed herself. Jack. <laughs> That Wendigo is not reanimated by Banes. She was never dead. She was. She had used some sort of gift to play possum. Oh, she shit. kind of appear dead. She is not as possessed by a Bane at all. What would you like to do? Oh my god! Because by the way, your pack mate is about to kill one of your tribe. Okay. Or uh, and Crowcatcher is currently fighting her. Yep. Which, I'm I'm gonna run up and shoulder butt crow catcher out of the way while barking uh barking not bane, which is probably I assume all I can get out in Krynos. Are you serious? Very good. And now uh crow catcher, what are you going to do this round? Uh well um my intention was to use dexterity, get around behind her. Um, put my claws in her throat from each side and just rip it wider, like rip her head off. Uh, if that makes okay, sense. Okay, so that's it. That sounds like a strength plus brawl in Krynos form. Here yeah. we go. First of all, let's see how Anton did on throwing a corpse at her. Anton, go ahead. Four. <laughs> yeah. Four. Uh, yeah, Anton, that's enough. So Anton, and Anton, what form are you in now? You're in Krynos, Krynos right? Yeah. So a, a huge. Uh, can you describe your Krynos form a little bit for us? What does it look like? Very Some gray like. with like like salt and pepper, black and gray, uh, hunched, not and just bulky, not the tallest. Like you say, nine foot. It's it's a, it's a decent amount of under nine foot, but just thick and uh, thick. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, would be the best way. Yeah, I like it. I Sexy. totally yeah. get I'm it. Getting around, um, so it's, all, it's, it's all muscle, and yeah. it takes the corpse. And it tosses it at uh, Katatek, who's currently um, trying to, like, has just arrived in Krynos form. And it hits her in the side, and it's going to take away from her dice pulls a little bit when she uh, tangles with one of these guys. I think she thinks Crow, Crow Catcher is her main uh, concern right now. And now let am. me have, yeah, now let me have what Dalton, Dalton, you were just going to use a strength plus brawl 
to take your opponent and run with them like a football. How did that go? <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, my 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 goal is to sink my <laughs> my. <laughs> yes, Rocky Top, uh, excellent for this group. But we all know it, even though we don't actually participate. Uh, yeah, so I got six successes. Okay, yeah, so. Uh, you describe to me what happens with six successes. Like, what okay. exactly do you want to? What is your goal? And show me what happens. I, I would like you. I would like to start the initial launch of my missile, and you can decide what havoc it wreaks. So I, um, I'm going to put my claws into the brain of that thing as best I can, and drag it along with me to beat something else with it. You know, I just I want it to be with me so I can I can kill other things with it and it at the same time, and just death and destruction. That's what I want. Your crinos claws are so deep in the skull of this zombie that it, like it would take some work to get it off of your <laughs> yeah, hand yeah. right now. Uh, yeah. And you are running with it uh, toward, I assume, the only combatants left, which are... Well, actually, that thing is still alive. You had yeah, only I, done brawl damage to it before, but now you're turning those into... One. And the more, the more it hurts me, the happier I am. Like, whatever it's trying to do to me to escape, the, the more I love it. That's another track. Okay. The more it hurts me. Yeah. Let's yeah. see how it does. <laughs> the happier I am. It's struggling against you, but you got six successes. It got yeah. one. Uh, it actually botched, really. So it, it actually got so fart. many ones. And like, yeah. So um, so I'm going to rule that, like, yeah, it doesn't have control Wedging over the body. On there more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jerry. Go ahead. Um, no, it's okay. Uh so you have it, and it's like not getting away. <clears throat> and I think the the bane or the weird like uh, entity is kind of trapped with you for now. Okay, right. um, so um, that's terrifying. Uh, your Krinos form. Describe your Krinos form a little bit. Yeah, I, I mean now that we're you, seeing all of them. Yeah, I think you kind of nailed it. I um, I don't know what what is Krinos. One point five times your human height. I guess I'm like close to nine feet, and. Um, <clears throat> And uh, jet black fur, and the really like sort of pointed ears, uh, long long muzzle. Um, yeah, and yeah, it's sort of the jackal kind of thing you described. Great. So this jackal is running with like its hand, like its talons, literally hooked into this dead body skull, getting ready to swing it at somebody. And now, uh, Jack Wild, how did you roll? I got six successes. Okay, and then um, my friend uh, Crowcatcher, how did you roll? Four. Cuatro. Four successes, and uh -huh. I'm going to roll for her, but I'm taking off successes because Anton hit her with a corpse for what <laughs> Cat Attack is trying to do. <laughs> uh, hit her with a corpse is another track. I just want to... You beat me to it, Anton. I was going to throw a severed head at someone. It's so she only got all over again. She only got one success, but I think that the person that got the most successes there was, in fact, uh, Jack Wild. And so he, uh, you were pushing, you were trying to push Crowcatcher out of the way, right? Yeah, that was I think easy. so. Yeah, I was going to shoulder oh. butt him and then just bark, bark, not bane. Uh, great. Um, that's enough for this to happen. Okay. The corpse hits her, and she's not able to really like fight at all. Um, Jack Wild pushes Crowcatcher out of the way. Crowcatcher, you do do some damage to her. You get your you, your claw goes across her one more time. She is in full uh, Krinos form right now, and in her Krinos form, her hair is very like light gray, and there's a lot of like like uh, tattoos, like kind of like you know, burnt into it when she takes on her Krinos form. Like all of these like black like marks all over her. And if anybody has uh, the uh, opportunity for a Wits Plus Occult role, and that is only Crowcatcher and uh, Jack Wild, actually, because they're the only ones close enough, um, you can interpret those tattoos. You can go ahead and roll that. I'm going to roll the hell out of that. Uh, four successes. Two. Okay. Um, four is enough to tell you that she is a theurge. She is the crescent moon. She is a speaker to spirits and a shaman uh, of, of the uh, Wendigo. Uh, and uh, 
She is very much alive and not possessed by a Bane, and her one success doesn't get her very far, but in Krynos form, she is trying to get back down into the lake. She is running down into the lake, uh, and uh, for her one success, I'll say that she just is now starting to wade in like about hip deep, uh, and it's like slow going because it's like frozen sludge, and she's looking back at you and snarling. This is so on Guru. She is retreating. Yeah. This is this is like against your culture. You fight. You crush skulls. What is she doing? Um, and now uh, let us uh, go to uh, Anton. Uh, and this will be our final round, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, mm. So let me know exactly what you do. This is the final round of this combat. I have decided because the best thing that V5 introduced was you can make combat as many rounds as you want. It doesn't have to go on for two days. Uh, plus, we've mostly told the story of this combat anyway at this point. So final round, Anton, what do you do? Are there any other things left other than – any other from where you left oh. other than uh, what's-her-face crawling into the lake? She – she, to be clear, once more, is not a Fomori. We, yeah, she, I, she is yeah, alive. Yeah. She is not possessed. Got it, um, got it, got it. The only Fomori left, the only zombie that was possessed by a Bane spirit, is the one that is currently hooked onto Dalton's claws <laughs> as he runs toward Karatek. Okay, can I shift just back to Hamid form then? You can shift back to Hamid form. I'm not going to make you roll for that. Hamid is your breed form, so I'll give it to you for free. Oh, Pretty but nice. everybody else does need to make a rage roll and see if they lose a point of rage since we just ended a round. Uh, except for you, my friend Anton, you automatically shift into Hamid on purpose. Um, and then uh, while everybody's making their little rage roll to see if they lose rage, because in our hack of Werewolf, every round you roll to see if you lose rage. When you get to zero rage, you can no longer be in your war form. You revert to your breed form. Anton, what uh, what are you going to uh, what are you going to do in your Hamid form? Is that all you're doing? Is reverting into Hamid? I'm just going to kind of just want to go up and see what's going on up there with those guys. See what you know. She's like you said. It, fe it feels like she she's not trying to defend herself per se. She's trying to get there. She's a theurge, so thinking maybe there's a right or something. She's trying to cleanse the the lake. There's a possibility. Who knows? Really interesting, and you're being very philodox as well. That's your, you're the half moon auspice of the uh, of of your of the guru, and you're being very kind of like the lawgiver. Like you're trying to figure out what's going on and give give people the benefit of the doubt. So you revert to Hamid, and you're doing that. Um, Dalton, what are you doing this round? Uh, I, I'm just trying to find something else to kill. I think. Um... I think that's my like. I don't have control at the moment, right? Oh yeah, like, you're I'm in just... frenzy round. You're in frenzy yeah, yeah. mode. Yeah. Um, I think you make a strength plus brawl roll against counterattack. Okay. Uh, okay. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we'll find out what happened with that. Jack Wild, what are you doing this round? I'm assuming I see Dalton doing that and can tell he's in frenzy, um, and I'm just gonna bull rush him and try to tackle him so that we both hit the ground and roll away. Give me a strength plus brawl attack in your Krynos form. And finally, Crowcatcher, you've just been knocked out of the way. What are you doing? Um, Y'all maybe help me out here because I think seeing her not fighting, seeing everybody dead around her, she didn't try to fight, uh, would absolutely bump up my rage. Maybe you want to just attack her. But as a ragabash and a clever uh, young wolf, I think maybe I would figure it out. And what adds to this, too, is I rolled my rage thing, too, which I can tell you momentarily. But... Any insight, John? How, how did you? Yeah, did you lose she, rage? I got a failure. Okay, so say, you lost a point of rage. Does that bring you to zero? Yeah, so I would be back to a wolf. Yeah, you're you back lost. to normal. If you if you fail on the rage roll while you are in Krynos, uh, okay. your rage goes down. Yeah. If you fail okay. while you're in you know normal normal life. It goes, goes up. up. It's a little. Gotcha. It's a little confusing, but it, it works. Okay, Mike. So I yeah, you reverted. That she's acting like prey, mm -hmm. and you're, you know, naturally a wolf. Mm -hmm. So would you treat her like that? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think that would be my go-to. But again, I'm, I'm trying. You know, Crowcatcher himself is is a ragabash. He's known for his wit. So in the same way that um, you just described, like she's a theer, she's got these marks. Maybe there's something to that. 
Uh, but definitely I know with no debate that Crowcatcher would want to track her up to the edge of the lake uh, and maybe come up to you even and Anton and just be like, you know, like, look, like, do we fucking take her down? What are yeah. we doing? That's all great, but we are in the heat of battle right now and you have a frenzying werewolf near you. So you are not able to really go, should I do this? Should I do that? I'm looking <laughs> to him. I'm communicating. <laughs> what is the action that Crowcatcher takes as he reverts back into a normal wolf? So Crowcatcher, you know, uh, once you get knocked uh, out of the way by Jack Wild, suddenly like you lose your rage and you shrink back down into this uh, small gray wolf. What do you do right now? I'm gonna run at um, I'm gonna run at Karatek. Very good. Here we go, Anton. Um, you run up, um, but I'm afraid a, a Hamid can't really get a word in edgewise unless you want to try a uh, charisma plus intimidation roll right now. Would you like to try that? No, no, it's no. kind of it's kind of chaos. There's a frenzy. <laughs> okay. okay, and now, uh, uh, J uh, Dalton, how did you do on your um, strength plus brawl roll? Uh, five successes. Okay, this is her roll to get away. Okay, her roll to get away got one, two, three, four. But guys, that ain't five, and so. Um, she gets deeper into like the lake, the polluted lake, but Dalton's on top of her. You've got like the nape of her fur. Your claws are piercing that hide and you're pulling her back, Dalton. And she's in full crinos, like howling and trying also, to like, yeah. it almost yeah. seems like as you watch guys that it's like suicide. Like she's like crawling into this sludge, which is definitely like poisonous, like, and it's getting higher and higher. But Dalton, you're there. Like you just did one lethal to her. I'm sorry, one aggravated damage to her with your claws, and uh, that is going to really hurt her dice pools. Um, and because she took some earlier from, uh, I, I, I believe it was from um, Crowcatcher. Okay, um, and now let's see how you did, uh, Jack Wild. How did you do? Eight successes. Ooh. Jack Wild, uh, you only get that one aggravated damage. You only get your claw into the nape of Karatek's neck, Dalton, before Jack Wild comes in and clobbers you as well. And, and you guys land hard on the bank of the lake as Karatek gets deeper and deeper. And finally, Crowcatcher, how did you do? Um, in terms of closing distance, two successes in terms of getting over to okay. her. So, Crowcatcher, you're the only one that sees this trickster. Um, you get in really deep, uh, dangerously deep, to try to follow her. And you see that there's something glowing down beneath the sludge. Uh, mm -hmm. And she turns to you and she says in, like, guttural, like, uh, guru speech, like, it had to be this way. Your kind, no. Crimes must be avenged. And then... The blackness swallows oh. the wolf creature before you. And you, my friend, must make a stamina plus, I oh think, boy. athletics roll to get out of this sludge right now. Ooh, dog paddle, baby. Come on. <laughs> stamina and what was it? What was it? I said athletics. <laughs> athletics, thank you. All right. So that's going to be one, two, three, four. Five, Animal athletics. Yeah. It's, it's like Air Bud. That's what it is. Three successes. Uh, okay. Stamina bananas. <laughs> Stamina's. Um, you take... Damn. You take uh, two aggravated damage from this poison. Damn. Um, it's getting into your mouth. It's getting into your ears. It's sticking to your fur. fur. It's like an oil spill in the middle of the lake. Uh, you were the only one to see her kind of go towards something glowing down in, in beneath the lake uh, and kind of disappeared into the sludge and the water. Uh, so combat is over. There Whew. are no more enemies, but there is a frenzying werewolf here. So, so we're going to do what's called a done. We're going to do what's called a done in one. Jack Wild, <laughs> roll strength plus brawl. Dalton Riggs, roll strength plus brawl. All uh, right. You guys, can I, I try to help it pull Mike out of the, out of the lake? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Here yeah, you Anton, Anton, you're like dragging this like wolf with matted black sludge covered fur up out of the lake. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> By the way, if you guys uh, both Jared, roll a ten, you have to kiss. Crino kit. Crino's kiss. Hey, Jared. Yep. Uh, how does being yeah. in frenzy work in terms of um, like am I? Does that con continue like my rage to mount, or does it roll the same as any other time you're in Crino's? As any other time you're in Krynos, you can keep okay. rolling to see if you're losing rage. You're burning off rage so that you eventually come back to your senses. But then, so I'll the act let you being... do that. I'll let you do that twice right now. Okay. Once for the round that you just had, where you kind of you, you got a bite right. out of Karatek, and then once after you tell me the uh, the uh, what happened with this strength plus brawl roll. How'd you do? Okay. Well, let me roll the that first to see if that affects the next roll. Zero successes. So in this case, uh, that's good. No, yeah, that's good. So my my rage goes down to three. Okay. And then for my um, was it uh, strength, strength plus brawl? Strength plus brawl. Okay. Six successes. Okay, Jack Wild, how did you do? Oh boy. Uh, I got eight successes, and I'm down to a uh, rage of one. Okay, eight successes. Um, so eight, what I'd like successes. to do is just get him in a position where, yeah, I just like to get him in a position where I put my mouth on his throat. I don't want to cause any damage, but just a dominance thing, um, and try to get I'm him gonna to say, calm down. Like, I'm going to say we don't need any more PvP. I just want role play to end the evening. We are going to have just a moment of role play. This Dalton, do you think he comes to his senses? Do you think his frenzy ends? Or does he fight? Does the frenzy keep going? He has so much rage built up. I feel like the frenzy continues, doesn't it? I, I feel like I, I could go either way. Like I, like by the rolls, I've gone Roll. down to rage three. But getting knocked on your ass doesn't make you happier, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> um, Track number seven. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. I, think we, I, think then, I think that a great place to leave it is right here. Uh, the right. sept has been desecrated. Your friends are dead, and one wolf has the other wolf's throat in its jaws. That's sort uh, of a kiss. Maybe. When we come back next time, <laughs> we will uh, we will <laughs> see if Brad's character kills Rusty's character, Ooh. and hopefully these guys will find out who did this and try to put a stop to their evil ways. Yeah. The next time we play. Rage across Alaska, werewolf, oh. the apocalypse, with my gaming group from oh. high school. Oh, <laughs> thank you all for all howling. I didn't like expect no. that. <laughs> um, that got super violent, and I forgot to do our usual content. Oh. Um, but, I mean, I, I don't know. The people sort of know by now. We It's a, it's a game about werewolves tearing things apart. It gets pretty violent. Uh, yeah, stream spoiler alert. alert. Uh, guys, thank you guys so much for uh, in, uh, playing with me again. The, the corpse I, I like might have changed. still been a surprise, but <laughs> well, right. usually not this early, but it still happens. Yeah. Violence I can handle. Corpse desecration I love. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, that was. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye to my players for right now. Um, guys, thanks again. None of us has changed a bit. We're still the same people. We still love White Wolf. Old white wolf games Absolutely. and uh, pretending to crush skulls with our Krynos hands. Same. Yeah, of course. Uh, Bananas. Adam, Bananas. Uh, Adam Logan, my brother, Rusty Birdwell, Michael Underdown, yeah. and Brad Hodson. Find them on their socials and say hello. Until next time, bye-bye, guys. Uh, and uh, that was that. Um, uh, so we – I mean, that was so much fun. I love uh, playing Werewolf the Apocalypse. We are eagerly awaiting the new edition of Werewolf that has been hinted and rumored for a long time. In the meantime, I tried my hand at a, at a little bit of a hack like we did for Mage when we did our Magi of Pittsburgh series. Um, and it was just great to see my friends uh, from uh, high school. We used to play Brad's Basement in Knoxville, Tennessee in the year 1997. And uh, I, I'm not even joking or making a snide remark when I say we are all exactly the same dudes, it feels like. It's kind of amazing. Um, I love you, the viewers, for being here. Please be sure to tune in on Sunday, 10 a.m. for Vampires. Uh, oh, forgive me. I'll be at Gen Con this weekend. Please tune in at 10 p.m. Sunday, 10 a.m. Sunday. Let me start over. Please tune in 10 a.m. this coming Sunday 
for the final chapter of Magi of Pittsburgh. We knew I was going to be at Gen Con, and we needed to program something in its place. So Magi of Pittsburgh, the final chapter with Amy Vorpal, Sarah Rose Kaplan, and Aaron Urist will appear this Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, and then after that, next Sunday, I also have to be away from my computer. Uh, but don't worry, we have prepared uh, a special playthrough of the Vampire the Masquerade uh, video adventure, Coteries of New York, for you. You will watch me as I navigate Coteries of New York. You can buy it on Steam. Uh, you can watch me play through it um, the following Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, we have lots of fun stuff coming up. We're doing lots of meetings about Dune uh, and Blades in the Dark right now. Um, so you'll see all of that coming up. Uh, so keep an eye on our socials. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, and especially on our Discord. And remember that we're always willing to talk to you about any of our content or any reaction you had to it on our Discord. We really do listen. We really do take your comments seriously. So please hit us up. There, I want to thank Clinton Crux and Brian Baldinger, my producers and partners, Megan Arch, my social media manager, Jill Petracek, our amazing art director, uh, and you, the viewers, especially for coming and hanging out with us on a Tuesday night. Until next time, keep the earth clean, or werewolves will come and put their banana claws in your skull holes. Uh, I love you. Happy gaming, you sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs>